The atmosphere was too heated, so Yuanzi decided to refrain from asking questions. But the Yuan Zuidan pill is the lowest grade. So why would Ho Cheng Wu take something that the old man wouldn't even give to spirit pets? The protagonist knows what he's talking about, but he has no proof. Ho Cheng Wu's combat strength is 90, that's three times more than Qin Cheng. Therefore, the old man wondered what he would do with such an inequality. As far as the kid could remember, it takes three days to create a Dongxuan pill. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to accompany this guy in a race against time. They use soul fusion again. The alchemy begins. Hospital building. Ho Chen Wu walked into them. He apologized to his boss. His Dantian had been abolished, so he would ask for medical expenses to be paid. He also apologized. If it weren't for his huge hospital bills, they wouldn't have to submit to these rich kids. He was the one dragging everyone down. Wang Tao tried to reassure this brother. Their hearts were pure. At first, everyone wanted to raise money for the boss. But in the end, with this countless money in their hands, they themselves did not notice how they lost themselves in their desires. Looking back, they realized that it was as if they had been intoxicated. There was no going back. But this lesson brought them back from heaven to earth. They need to stick together. Even if it comes down to becoming a simple band of assassins, they need to heal their boss too. By then, the Guvyu Club, which is passionate about martial arts, is sure to be back. Ho Chen Wu agreed and asked for everything to be provided to him. If he kills Zhang Qin Cheng, then everything will be over and back to normal. The campus grounds. Everyone was clamoring for the bastard Zhang Qin Cheng to be expelled. Why doesn't he just die? Isn't the disciplinary committee ashamed that they are protecting a rapist? Gao Ha told them the great news that the first-year student had accepted the life and death challenge from President Ho. In three days, he will publicly destroy that bastard. That's why he's inviting everyone to join him. His opponent will be President Ho, who is listed third on the list of immortals. This lustful beast is surely doomed. What luck that the Gu Wu Club will get justice. Ho Cheng Wu has become a hero to them. He had already guessed before that this Zhang Qin Cheng was only good at first glance. He used to think that people like that were to be looked up to. This is exactly the kind of scumbag that's in their class. Their reputation will definitely suffer. Gao Hao asked Chen Ning if she could see his true face now. But his friends began to defend the protagonist, saying that he is not like that at all. It's all slander. They still believe their friend. Maybe Gao Hao could lie, but how could the victim himself lie? Pretend tears appeared in Sun Qian's eyes as she talked about how Qin Cheng could do such a thing to her. Everyone started accusing Chen Ning and Zi Ming of being in cahoots with that trash. How dare they even dare to accuse that girl? They don't even know how much courage it takes to talk about such a situation. They have no conscience if they are in league with that scumbag. They should face the truth, because this evidence is irrefutable. A scumbag like Qin Cheng has never been confessed to by a pretty girl, so it's no wonder this happened. Above the campus grounds, Zhang Yu Yu appeared. She called this shameless idiot Sun Qian and asked how much longer she was going to pretend. The girl replied that she didn't know what her little sister was talking about. Ho Cheng Wu is very clever if he proposed a life and death trial to prevent the disciplinary committee from revealing the truth. A man accused President Jiang of covering up for a rapist. So this girl dares to talk about President Ho. Everyone started praising the Gu Wu Club again. The Academy and the Crime Bureau owed President Ho a debt of gratitude. Also, people wanted them to destroy those bastards from the committee. Zhang Yu Yu should already realize that the entire school is against Zhang Qin Chen. That arrogant president dares to teach a girl. What will she do if the whole academy becomes her enemy? She should kill one by one or all of the phrase. Another person appeared on stage and asked what about him. Li pulls in here, and so will not allow harm to come to the disciples that are trying to restore justice. Everyone started talking about how handsome the chairman was. They also asked the president to get justice. Being a part of the academy, like President Zhang Yu Yu herself, he was looking forward to fighting. No matter how reckless Zhang Yu Yu was, she wouldn't let a conflict between the student council and the committee appear, after all. But the girl herself didn't think so. Li tugged and she took over, and the rest of the student union must fight to the end, or ornately kill every coward. He didn't expect the disciplinary committee to be all crazy. All students were shouted to stop this outrage. The student union and disciplinary committee were told to return to their own seats. Li tugged and thought that this time the main character was definitely finished. If the student body president is that angry, she can offer him a trial too. He didn't expect Zhang Yu Yu to care about anyone at all. Did the president assume she had a crush on him? She was already starting to protest, talking about who could possibly like such a jerk in the first place. 
after which the girl noticed Chen Ning's gaze on her. Zhang Yuyu began to explain to the girl that there was no need to believe his words. It's not like that at all. Meanwhile, Wan Yuan thought about whether Qin Cheng wanted to prove something. After all, he can't even defend himself right now. Three days later, finally, the Dong Xuan pill is ready. This drained Yuanzi's strength, so he needs to return to the shower hall to recover. Unfortunately, on the battlefield, the guy would have to fend for himself. The protagonist thanked the master. There's no way they're gonna lose. He ate that pill. There was a sort of golden glow in the room. Ho Cheng Wu, who ranks third on the list of immortals and is president of the Guwu Club, was asked to come up for an appointment. The audience asked President Ho with a life and death duel to destroy all evil for them. Such a disgrace should not be in this academy. This rapist should be killed. Finally, whether to pull and get rid of this splinter. Sun Qian hopes that the chairman will fill all that has been done for him. The protagonist was brought into the arena as if he were some kind of prisoner. Zi Ming didn't understand how Qin Cheng could agree to such a thing. He must have been forced to do so. The girl, however, replied that it was useless to argue with this guy, so one should calm down. Even if she's not a worthy opponent for them now, a year three, ten, she'll pay for it. Even if it takes a lifetime, just to be buried next to him. The girl noticed that there was something wrong with this guy. Ikshu Jan realized what had happened to this boy. She didn't understand how he was able to do this at all. The protagonist stood there and heard about killing this rapist. They called him a disgrace to the academy. The pillar in the Hall of Heroic Souls was also almost filled to the brim. How ironic. Just a couple days ago everyone was admiring the hero on this site. And in the end it all turned around in the blink of an eye. The guy asked, but isn't that silly? Someone wants to save the world while he rejects this hero. Chen Wu asked if those were the dead man's last words. I think the President Ho's got something mixed up. The dead man here is not him at all, but only Ho Cheng Wu. All were bewildered at this surge of their strength. The protagonist is now at the sixth level of key training. His combat power is 60 units. The kid used the art of wind, gust. This guy's speed is much faster than Cheng Wu's. After that, Ho Cheng Wu utilized the water art. The protagonist used the power of Tai Chi. No one could believe that the combat power of 90 was inferior to 60. What's even going on here? President Ho just needs to finish off this rapist. That boy is really a monster. He was able to strike an opponent that was three levels stronger. Not to mention the magic power, he had twice the ability of a level 9. If President Ho doesn't respond, she will continue her strike. He's using the Avatar of Chaos to finish off this president. Things aren't going at all the way he expected. Ho Cheng Wu used the art of wood, a giant forest. The girl explained that Ho Chen Wu techniques combine magic and martial arts. Even Li Tian Yi admitted that compared to last time, his skills had improved greatly. It's his mana absorbing technique. Now I see what he's up to. Now this guy won't be able to use the godlike form. The power is slowly draining away. The avatar of chaos is greatly increasing its energy consumption. So if it continues like this, it will be the first to lose. He needs to finish this as soon as possible. The guy guessed that Ho Chen Wu was using the concealment technique to hide, and he was well prepared. After analyzing every battle of the protagonist, he made his plan of action. At close range, even with his level, there would be no chance of winning. Except that immortals of his level can't use the soul perception technique. Relying on the art of concealment and lightness, Ho Cheng Wu is now invincible to him. As long as he hides quietly in the shadows, Qin Chen's mana will be depleted. In that case, he'll just use fire and wind and fill his sword with it, and burn this forest to the ground. But the protagonist shouldn't expect to be able to use a spell. A spell that uses both hands is one big disadvantage. Luckily the guy had time to react. Everyone was screaming about how awesome President Ho is. He needs to launch the next arrow at the protagonist's head. Turns out the techniques this guy was practicing are closely related. They make a perfect combination. The power of the arrows is very high. If not dodged, even a single arrow can seriously injure. Chen Wu didn't understand the best course of action right now. Perhaps he should continue to avoid the protagonist. But what about this one? After the arrow flies off the bowstring, there is a huge mana fluctuation. You have to hold your breath, find and calculate the trajectory. He saw that arrow. The girl yelled for him to duck. Another arrow was almost near his head. It was a double shot. He just almost died. This president is definitely worthy of the title of third in the list of immortals. Ho Chung Wu saw that the protagonist had already reached his limit. A triple salvo would definitely finish him off. All the spectators were silently watching this. His friends were very worried about Qin Cheng. The next step will decide whether he wins or dies. If Zhen Yuan was here, 
he would be able to withstand at least a hundred shots. He would also be able to find him with a star atlas. But the guy realizes that he can't always rely on the power of a heroic soul. Ho Cheng Wu released his three arrows. Jiang Ching Chen's limit is two arrows. And these three cut off his escape route. No matter which way he tries to dodge, they will not reach him. But the guy wasn't going to give up that easily either. That arrow pierced him. The others didn't understand if he was going to kill himself. This animal had gone mad. Lee tugged and realized that he had done it on purpose, as the last two arrows were aimed to try and avoid the first one. Zhang Qingcheng purposely set himself up for the attack by covering his vital organs. He had found the weak point of that deadly attack. He won't run away now. That's not good. The protagonist chopped down trees, but Ho Chen Wu wasn't there. The girl also didn't understand where he could have disappeared to. The moment the arrow leaves the bowstring, he changes his position. This kid's got it. Another arrow almost caught up with him. Suddenly, a guy appeared from behind Ho Chen Wu and asked if he was so sure about it. The audience was shocked. Yuan Yuan asked what had happened in the first place. Ho Chen Wu didn't understand how he was able to use teleportation either. An ancient technique that reduced the land area to a few inches. A single step is capable of traveling thousands of miles. So far, he can only manage 10 meters. But that will be enough for now. Zhen Yuanzi had spent the past few days perfecting the elixir. At the same time, all of the protagonist's energies were focused on training. Did Qin Cheng win? Chen Wu only laughed and asked who knew that he possessed this kind of power. What a pity it didn't help him. Qin Chen realized that this cloning technique, President Ho had led him through it. Clones appeared on three sides, heralding the imminent end of this battle. The guy realized he needed to increase his speed to the max and dodge. Well, Ho Cheng Wu said it was the end. Suddenly, he changed the direction of his arrows. They were directed at Chen Ning. Qin Chen shouted out that this guy was a complete bastard. All the clones fired. The protagonist must have time to protect her. I mean, she was screaming at him not to do it. But it was too late. He fell to the ground. Ho Chen Wu recognized this guy, a worthy opponent, and all of his clones disappeared. In this failed fight, it's a win for him. She can't feel Qin Cheng's breath. Nine arrows that pierce all vital points of the body. It's just instant death. Chen Ning started crying, not believing it at all. It's finally over. He was finally free of his weakness and cowardly side. Everyone was screaming about President Ho's victory and that the lusty bastard was dead after all. It's a well-deserved death. This is exactly how it should have ended. Yuan Yuan did not understand what Qin Cheng wanted to prove, though she probably realizes it. Killing and destroying, building on the corpses of men. That's not the way this world should be. And the main character's eyes grew dim. Slowly they began to close in screaming that he was scum and he was finally dead. Someone's voice spoke to the young man that he accepts his determination and grants him another chance. In return, he must summon and free him. They will defeat all of them. The boy asked who it was. The spirit only laughed. In return, the spirit asked thousands of years if anyone cared. The demon fox drove the emperor himself crazy. The ruler did horrible things for no reason. The people were trapped. For all their sins, one death would not be enough. Everyone was clamoring to kill the queen and destroy the demons. They will hold a public execution for the peace of the common people. She only laughed. When the sun sank behind the ruined mountains and rivers in the distance, the realization came that it was over. She was the ancestor of a prehistoric clan of foxes. The Great War begins. The three saints led thousands of immortals to fight, seeing that the three kingdoms were about to go. She, unable to bear the suffering of the people, turned into the Queen of Daji to drive him mad. To change fate, the Shang Dynasty had to be destroyed, and then the war would end. All this time she was killing one official after another. Her heart ached, and only one thought gave her peace. All to save lives. The goal had been accomplished. But the common people she fought for hated and divined her. They wished only to behead the demonic vixen so that they could taste her flesh and blood. The man took a swing at her. He wanted to prevent it, but he couldn't. Her head was severed, but the vixen sat as if nothing had happened. It's not like they didn't realize what was going on. Didn't he just kill her? The Nine-Tailed family had always been good at illusion and soul magic. It has the power of the Nine Magic Moons. It can turn even reality into illusion and come back to life nine times in a row. In that case, they will blow her head off time after time until she dies. Blood spatters appeared. The fox asked the young man, when a man dies, he must want to survive, right? The guy replied that it was possible. They beheaded her nine times, but she stayed alive not for fear of death. Here she was, just wanting to hear someone call her something other than some demon queen, to kill so many innocents, 
to deceive the king who loved her with all his heart, and all for the sake of the common people of the world. If only someone understood her suffering, then all that had happened would not have been in vain. It's a shame that no one said anything like that before she was beheaded for the ninth time. That's how the protagonist ended. They're the same. She asked about what his choice would be if she shared her power. A temple that holds heroic souls. A prize in the sacrifice of feelings of obsession and grief. He asked the nine-tailed heavenly forest to let him inherit her dreams. Five-star heroic soul, nine-tailed celestial fox, Sudaji. Suddenly the teacher realized something was wrong. Shared souls, Sudaji. People didn't understand what was going on. The boy, however, rose again. The tale obtained through a thousand years of cultivation is the bargaining chip of the Nine Moons technique. After the deadly battle, his combat power rose by two levels. Finally, it reached 80 units. Friends were glad he survived after all. Lee tugged and didn't understand whether it was possible to return from the other world. Zhang Yuyu noticed that his aura had changed. She had never seen such cold mana before. Wei Zhan had a bad feeling. Ho Cheng Wu asked how that was even possible. He is sure that this kid must be dead. The protagonist wondered if not him, then who would rewrite the damn world. The audience shouted for the president to kill this rapist again. Suddenly, they heard someone's voice saying that Zhang Qincheng was innocent. That asshole needs to remember that she's putting her life on the line for him. She explained that Gao Hao has been looking for someone to play the role of a harassment victim for a long time. And she had proof. She had a note saying that they would need help to deal with Zhang Qingchen. After all, she doesn't need to be taught how to properly seduce a man. This was the same conversation when Gao Hao attacked the girl afterwards. There was their whole conversation about her selling her body in exchange she could become Xianqi's apprentice. Tzu Ming shouted that they were all idiots. They had said that before, hadn't they? She knew that Qin Cheng would never do such a thing. The disciples wondered if it was possible that he had really been lied to and it was all planned. Gao Hao and the other bastards were just using them. The teacher replied that it was wonderful. After this duel, none of them will escape. Li Tian and got angry that it was a trashy wench, wanting to ruin everything. Sun Qian started talking about how they were finished. Gao Hao shouted that he would personally smash her against the wall. Going up against these people was too scary, and she still is. The girl confessed that she really wanted to be like Zhang Qingcheng, so he should definitely win and don't dare lose to these scumbags. Su Da Ji noticed that this kid is a lucky guy. This girl is standing up for her hero that she is even envious of him. After all, she has surpassed the main character's expectations. Whether it's false or true, it doesn't matter anymore. The judgment of life and death is above any law. No one has the right to interfere. He keeps his word, so this guy is finished. Since Cheng Wu was able to kill him once, he would kill him a second time. Is he really sure he can do this? Qin Cheng thinks that now, he will be able to behold something that is usually hidden from his eyes. The awakening of power is a sign of moving to the soul purification stage. But how is this even possible if he is only at the eighth stage of Koi development? He began to fly purposefully to one side. In this direction there was a Ho Chen Wu that utilized the art of concealment. Even the fact that he was able to dodge that blow didn't help him. He used the cloning technique again. The kid guessed that four projections was his limit. If he guesses where the real one is, the next strike could be the last. But if the guy is wrong, he'll meet death by his arrow. That makes it a one in four chance of winning. Ziming couldn't stand it and stood up to support Chin Chen. The others also began to support the king of the first year. They have humbled themselves and lied to everyone, so the guy must punish them. Ho Cheng Wu also heard their cries for Zhang Chin Cheng to win, but they're not wrong about anything. His victory is simply inevitable. Ho Cheng Wu realized that this was not a soul purification. He didn't know how the protagonist sensed his clones. I thought he said he could see everything now. The falling guy couldn't remember the last time he'd had such a good fight. He studied techniques and spells for days on end, and afterward founded an ancient martial arts society. In the end, how ironic. He recognized that Zhang Qincheng was indeed the strongest. President Ho is a genius of ancient martial arts, though now only a Mutli Tianyi, all because of a measly pill. Chen Wu didn't realize where he got the Sansong pill from. The reason why this kind of elixir is so valuable is because the abilities of alchemists are getting lower and lower with each generation. Ho Cheng Wu could consider it a mere coincidence, but in the Tianchuan Academy, he is the only second grade alchemist. Zhang Yuyu asked, isn't the head of the Su family the same level? Then no wonder Su Yun is so protective of him. How stupid would you have to be to refuse to be friends with someone like that? This guy really is a consummate genius. He almost ruined the best talent in this academy. That's why Zhui Zhan was attracted to this guy. Ho Cheng Wu asked to say what he wants for the guy to fulfill any order. 
but the protagonist replied that there would be no deal. To turn away from the principles of the Ascended for the sake of one's own salvation is unforgivable. Everyone watched in amazement as the guy did such an act. This pill is a second-degree panacea, and the protagonist just destroyed it. Zi Ming cried, since he decided not to give her away. So why not sell her then? The girl replied that he had always been like this. She, on the other hand, assumed it was all for the sake of showing off. This guy is really straight up eye-catching. To survive, he had to give up everything that characterized him as a cultivator. Chen Wu knelt down and asked him to teach him. He won't last long and this will be his redemption. It's a kind of way of realizing his sins. It was obvious that this guy was remorseful. In that case, he gave him another pill. This is the Kinkwen pill, which is a second grade alchemy treasure. With this holy elixir, he would no longer need to swallow the Sansong pill, which destroys his mana. Looks like there's a new king of alchemy. They witnessed such an event with their own eyes. I wonder if they've all been blessed. Ho Cheng Wu really didn't think he would give the pill to him so easily. The boy replied that his friend's house fed it to the dogs. The principal was right, and this guy really is a fool. Ho Cheng Wu admitted defeat. From now on, his life belongs to the protagonist. Now it was over. The winner is the student Zhang Qin Cheng. According to the rules, the life and property of the defeated one passes into the hands of the victorious one. Ho Cheng Wu, who is third in the list of immortals, gives up his place after losing. It was unbelievable to see a freshman rise to the top three. His greatness is boundless. After today, all the influential people will carry olive branches to him. Even if they couldn't be friends, the most important thing was not to offend this freshman. The kid asked, so why aren't they still applauding? Everyone shouted out the name Zhang Chin Cheng. Those who had wrongfully accused him began to praise him in a flash of eye. He wouldn't have dared to dream of earning such an attitude as a student. But now, looking at those ridiculous faces, he found it tiresome. On the other hand, it was silly to expect anything different from Earth people. She's been disappointed in this world for a long time, but it's quite interesting. But the protagonist turned away and said that he already has someone he likes. Chen Ning rushed into his embrace. The girl apologized to him. She couldn't do anything from the beginning to the end. He told her not to cry because it was already over. Yuan Yuan watched them. The girl muttered that this couple brought together by the heavens. How could a person like Yuan Yuan hope for such a thing? But she was approached by the president of the disciplinary committee, who praised the girl and told her to go back to the Sanke and report everything. On behalf of the disciplinary committee, she will be given the opportunity for free training. Yuan Yuan asked if she was allowed to receive something like this. The girl reassured her and explained that talent was not everything. In the future, the committee will need people with the same values. Yuan Yuan almost cried and wanted to thank the elder. But Zheng Yu Yu shouted out to the guy that she recognizes that he is good. But her beloved is still a long way off. Whether it was the name of the academy's best or Chen Ning, he would have it all to himself. The girl, however, became embarrassed and asked what the two of them were carrying. Apparently, Su Da Zi has quite a few rivals. Yuan Zi explained that this little guy has long been liked by female disciples. The main character resembles this old man in his youth. She didn't expect to see immortal ancestor Zhen Yuan here. The old man replied that she could just call him Xiao Zhen. The fox wondered if he hadn't run like a doggy after the goddess Niuva when he was young. And then Yuanzi recognized that it was her student and brat who was preventing him from approaching the temple of his beloved. Sudazi replied that it was her duty to prevent perverts from disturbing her mentor. That little brat is too chatty. No wonder the patron eventually dumped her and made her an outcast. She also remembered that she had a younger brother named Sun Wukong, who was trained by Nuiwa. Fox had heard that the venerable Zhen Yuan had ginseng fruit trees in the Taoist temple. It seems that they were appropriated by one brazen monkey. Yuanzi recalled that her wagon had been stroked by some Neja and Yang Jian with a group of uncouth children. The girl, however, replied that she had stolen an entire tower from the old man. The old man, however, recalled that she had been captured alive during the Great Battle of the Gods. The fox said that the monkey had robbed his house. Yuanzi suggested to stop all this. For some reason she was going on about one primate. That old man was a pervert who harassed the goddess Nuva. He managed to draw a draw in a battle with the immature Buddha Tathagata. Hongjun Daozu would rather give the seat of the Jade Emperor to a Taoist boy than to Yuan Zi. The old man himself had already asked to return to the monkeys. Meanwhile, the disciplinary committee was already grabbing all the deceivers. Sun Qian explained about how it wasn't her fault and Gao Hao made her do it. Gao Hao shouted to Chen Yuan that she was no longer alive. Sui Zhan was tired of putting up with all this. 
she slapped that shameless girl first. After that, the stupid jerk was slapped in the face as well. She asked if she could destroy their mana and expel them from the academy at once. If they think that being the principal doesn't mean anything. The guy asked not to be expelled. This expulsion is equivalent to death for him. His strength is constantly growing, and it is not beneficial for the academy to lose such a talent, he said. She immediately turned her attention to Li Tian, and asked how they even dared to slander her students. She also assumed that the student council president was also involved. He called her words too hurtful. Zhang Qingcheng and he are best friends. The Li family has always strived for justice and righteousness. An Otrebia like Ho Cheng Wu would have been executed if he had only come close to him. Principal Xue replied that there are no impenetrable walls. She said to keep that kid out of her sight. Li Tian replied that a decent person has no need to be afraid of erroneous speculation, and that was the end of it. He watched the main character and his friends. A scene immediately flashed through his mind as the protagonist reached out for a tug and pull. That's why this guy deserves to be his only friend. On the way home, no one thought that Chen Yuan would personally be so helpful. Chen Ning explained that she might be a stubborn girl, but she was still a good girl. They should definitely be friends. The guy asked if it was just him, or if he sensed a note of jealousy. She replied that it was all nonsense, and the guy was like a brother to her. He has two spirits now. To defeat the Wu clan, you'll need something else. Now the next step is to practice meditation. You must absorb all the experience gained from the battle with Ho Cheng Wu. Yuanzi started yelling about being killed by a tarantula with one bite. Sudazi asked Ancestor Jen to explain something to her. The old man inquired as to what she wanted to know, an array of heaven and earth. Sudaji was sitting there holding Chin Chin in her arms. There were also humans there, and it seems demons. She called this world too weird. The fox asked why the array of two beginnings had formed, and what was going on here in general. Yuanzi replied by asking if she was doing well. The girl asked if he couldn't see that. Just then, they abruptly heard the screams of the main character and immediately looked at him. After the battle, his QI learning level had increased again and his combat power had reached 90. Now it's like the soul-cleansing stage is just a stone's throw away. He noticed the vixen's intense gaze on himself and wondered if he had something on his face. She, on the other hand, is only concerned about one thing. Sudaji asked who he was. In response, the guy also inquired, as did Wen Zi, if she was doing well. She realized from their faces that they really didn't know anything. At that moment, a question appeared in her mind. Is she the only one who sees what is beyond the starry sky? Meanwhile, Chen Yuan was running off somewhere. As soon as she reached the stairs, some unknown man was already standing there. The hooded man said goodbye to her. She decided to open his mind with the ghostly art of the soul, but the magic sleeve prevented her from doing so. Fox asked why he was interfering, and didn't he want to know the guy's past? He also explained that the Master of the Hall of Souls could give any orders to the summoned. He explained that the Master of the Hall of Souls could give any orders to the summoned. If the protagonist becomes her puppet, she will be able to control all souls, including Yuanzi. Does she really think he'd let that happen? The guy had only practiced for one night, so why did all the mana run out? He immediately looked at the two spirits with suspicion and asked if they were secretly using his power. They began to shake their heads. He told the two to go back to the shower room and sit there. A girl burst into his room and told him there was trouble. They immediately went to the window and saw the crowds of vehicles there. It looked like famous cultivators were flocking to the Tian Chuan. The girl assumed that the Zhao family had decided to take revenge. They will regret deciding to drag his loved ones into this. Yanzi felt that they were all immortals with combat power above a hundred. Looks like we'll have to use the power of illusions. He immediately asked the vixen what was wrong with her in the first place. This guy would fight with his magic, of course. They also immediately greeted Zhang Qincheng. The chairman of Rice's company introduces himself, and he would like to suggest that the protagonist join them. But someone said that Rice is a lowlife, and he should pay attention to the Huawei Association. It seems that all the powerful people have gotten wind of his success. Their parents came out to the children and asked the girl what was going on and why such serious people, who are usually spun on TV, suddenly came to them. She, on the other hand, replied that someone had become the second youngest student to make it to the top since the founding of the school, and also publicly demonstrated the skills of a second-rate alchemist. Mom asked, and who was this talented student? He also explained to the chairman that he had no desire to join anything right now. He thanked them for the honor. But if the skills of an alchemist were needed and they paid the appropriate price, the younger generation would gladly be willing to befriend them. 
they decided to respect Jiang's wishes. If this genius needs any support, they will gladly provide it. Everyone is happy to be friends with a high-class alchemist. The guy went back to his room and asked Ili Tian and how he felt about it. He will achieve everything even without the influence of a famous family and surpass them by his own efforts. After which, he heard his parents shouting that whether this talent was Qin Chen. It took a long time for his parents to realize it. Suddenly, Chen Yuan Yuan called back to him. The guy replied that he thought she didn't want to talk to him and thanked her for yesterday. The girl asked him for help, for the Zhao family was here. They attacked her. An hour earlier. We just need to shut up the Chen Yuan. It's not that hard. The Bureau of Immortal Control has already intervened in the investigation. She is now the only witness to the accusation against his own son. Doesn't the head of the Great Halo family know how to get rid of whistleblowers? Gao Wenxian asked. But isn't he it easier to pay for silence? Framing a classmate is not such a serious offense. After saying these words, Li Tian and suggested that he was so much intimidated by Zhang Qin Cheng. It is unfortunate, but he believes that the best price for silence is death. He also asked if, by taking only his son into account, he had forgotten that this also applied to Li Tianyi. After that, he ordered his men to kill the girl, but to do it cleanly. If there's any evidence left, the Zhao family will be finished. A subordinate asked the head what to do about that guy. The man replied that no one from the family should run into him from today. This kid can surpass the great masters in the future. They can't afford to insult such a talent. Tian Yi replied that lowlifes devour their own kind, and geniuses naturally suppress those like them. Qin Cheng immediately asked where they were. He would come to her right now. The girl replied that he was catching up, and so she reached the very stairs. She couldn't believe that a supreme monk was attacking an ordinary girl. Well, she shouldn't feel bad, because in the eyes of the strongest, they're all just ordinary lowlifes. It's just that today, they decided to get rid of her. Her phone dropped and the guy asked again where they were. But the girl didn't answer at all. He immediately called out to Su Dazi. She showed up and asked why he was yelling. The guy explained that it was a smartphone, and it was receiving data that people used to communicate. She should use her soul power now to find out where the signal is coming from. After which, he immediately called out to Zhen Yuanzi. The old man replied still well outside. The old man must get into resonance with him and use all his strength to step a thousand miles. They head toward the place Daji sees. There he landed outside the building. They just can't be late. Suddenly something fell in front of him. The sight struck him to the core. It was Yuan Yuan's body. He immediately used the divine technique, Origin Qi. The guy begged her to wake up and come back to them. Yuanzi stopped him. The guy asked if he wasn't a saint. There must be a spell that could help her. Yuan Tzu explained that any power has a limit. He began to ask her to use her nine magic moon technique. The vixen explained that her magic only reverses the attack received in reality into an illusion. And she can not influence others. Is it really back to normal after all? Had nothing changed at all and he was helpless. Meanwhile, someone was already watching them. Daji warned me that this man is in the soul purification stage. No matter how much of a big shot he is in the Zhao family. The guy's bound to kill him. The hooded man didn't realize what kind of technique this was. Could be teleportation. Although it doesn't even matter as long as the one using it is only a practitioner of key management. This stranger didn't feel like fighting this guy. But since he had come himself, it would be good to get rid of another splinter. This stranger also said goodbye to the protagonist by attacking him. But then his arm was pierced. This is the law of thunder of the highest rank of the Qianlong Pavilion, shrinking the firmament. There's a lightning master in town who is capable of injuring him. And it's Zhang Yu Yu. That sucker is killing people from her academy. Apparently, he's just in a hurry to die. Now the second strongest man in the school wants to fight him. What an honor. She asked if he had fought with Li Tianyi. The man advised the guy to be sensible and it would end now. Otherwise, death will suddenly catch up with him. It was bad enough that he ran away. Shui Zhan, who had seen Chen Yuan's body downstairs, appeared and asked what was going on. The girl replied that she too had just arrived and had successfully saved the fool's life. The protagonist replied that the Zhao family had started to take revenge, and he was to blame for what happened. They had the guts to do it. Director Zhue asked if there was any evidence. He replied that unless they were willing to be destroyed by the academy, it was unlikely to find any evidence. She will return to the school now and personally interrogate Gao Hao. She'll use any means necessary, even torture. In the meantime, the director will get him to confirm all the murders his family has committed. Zhang Yu Yu wanted to go with her. But Xu Zhan replied that she was too young and some things were not for children's eyes. She handed him the address of Chen Yuan Yuan. Since this girl had died for him, he should pay his respects to her family. 
The protagonist's condition was extremely depressed. She also noticed it. The president of the disciplinary committee has decided to offer condolences on behalf of the school. Police officers were already on the scene. The guy took the girl's dead body and put it in his car. Zhang Yuyu asked how he was, but he just stayed silent. He has experienced the death of a friend and almost lost his own life. There is no doubt that he is both very frightened and hard at the same time. Qin Cheng only whispered that he would make everyone in the Zhao family pay. Everyone without exception. They arrived at the house of the Yuan Yuan. A woman came out and asked who they were. The guy introduced himself as her daughter's classmate. She immediately guessed that he was Zhang Qin Cheng. The boy was surprised that she knew him. As it turned out, his daughter had been talking about him a lot lately. She even said recently that after they met, she rethought a lot of things for the first time. She told him not to worry and said she's a pretty progressive parent. This is the age where it's time for love. Mom asked where you and you and herself was. She thought they had gone on a date. The guy told me she was dead. She just stared at this guy in disbelief. After that, the woman realized he wasn't even joking. A little while later they left. The girl knows he wants revenge. But the Zhao family is very powerful and they can't be defeated by one man. Let him better leave everything to the disciplinary committee. The guy replied that she really has a lot to learn from Shui Zhan. The girl asked what he was even talking about. Qin Cheng, on the other hand, explained that the Zhao Hao family would immediately expel him from the academy. After that, this kid would no longer be under their control. The Immortal Control Bureau would take over the case. It turns out, Auntie only rushed to the school to prevent the cultivator department from picking him up. She immediately dialed the number of the woman who was signed from her as the horny aunt Shue. The principal picked up the phone and the woman apparently told her everything. Zhang Yuyu cracked her phone open. The principal was late. When Zhui Zhan arrived at the academy, the Zhao Hao had already been handed over to the bureau. Now we can only hope that the Immortal Control Bureau can find the evidence. But we can forget about that now. The Gao family will pay someone to come forward. And even if they don't believe it, they'll still have to close the case. Anyway, the Immortal Department is subordinate to the Qian Lun Pavilion. It shouldn't be this incompetent, but that's what they'll see tomorrow. The head of Dongfang Shixi Pavilion was shown on TV. The girl and him are quite similar. She immediately pretended they knew what he was talking about. They couldn't even cross paths with a man like that. Dongfang Jishi will train this person in the technique, the thunderous strike of the Dragon of Calamity, on the Emperor's orders. Once again he failed, and he kept doing it over and over again. Now he could see why the Lord had chosen this guy as his apprentice. The boy replied that he knew he wasn't strong enough and asked without mockery. He has a goofy daughter. But, like this guy, she tries her best, making her much stronger than the others. She has her mother's last name, and she's like her late mother in character. In order to happen, her siblings, the girl ran away from home and went to train alone in the ordinary world. The boy has been coming here for the third year, but this is the first time he hears that Dongfang Jixi has a daughter. The man explained that she had died in the city of Tianchuan, in the crash that didn't take only his life. When the witch clan attacked the town, she was the one who saved the kid and died for a man she didn't even know. The protagonist promises that her sacrifice will not be in vain. If his daughter were alive, they would definitely be good friends. Now he realized it was her. The girl only wondered what he was talking about. Hinchin told her to just forget about it. He had always been a burden to those around him. The guy didn't even know if someone like him could rewrite the fate of others. The next morning, Zhang Yuyu called back to him. Everything happened just as the protagonist said it would. This morning, someone came to the bureau and voluntarily surrendered. He confessed that he saw Chen Yuanyuan alone and decided to kill her out of spite. Gao Hao was immediately cleared of all charges. The whole school doesn't believe in his innocence. They collectively boycott classes and rally in front of the immortal office. He passed out. As soon as he opened the door, Chen Ning appeared there. She was told what had happened yesterday. The girl asked if he was going to kill Gao Hao. The boy guessed that Zhang Yuyu had asked the girl to stop him. But Zhang Yuyu only said that there are countless police officers in the bureau, so there is no need to go there now. There is a suitable place to attack on the way home. Zhang Yuyu will be there to detain the rest of the family. He took back what he said yesterday. She and her aunt are really the same species. Immortal Crime Bureau. People were protesting because the Immortal Affairs Department was covering up for criminals. The Zhao family must pay for their deeds. They're demanding justice for the academy students. Call Wen Zan has arrived. The woman immediately wanted to lash out at him and asked about how he even dared to show up here. His family should pay in blood. 
But the guard pushed the woman away. The man appealed to the chief of police of Kanya, saying that his son had caused a lot of trouble. The police chief told him to get out of here or he wants to turn himself in. The subordinates asked Mr. Kan if they really should let him go. They would never believe that the Zhao family was not involved in the case. But what can the police chief even do now? It's just a police department, and it's all about evidence. The police chief said that in half an hour Gao Hao will be released. Chief Khan is wise, but there's something else. Gao Wenchen must have gotten a little cocky. The man replied that this was not true, but too many people mistakenly held his son responsible for the girl's death. For example, chairwoman Zhang Yu Yu, and that guy Zhang Qin Cheng. He's just worried that anger might cloud their young minds, that they might wish to take revenge on his innocent child. This is the most convenient place to kill, and if they don't want to attack, they'll do it here. He hoped that Mr. Chief would follow him personally and see to the safety of his child. He is here as an honest citizen and is asking for help from the Crime Bureau. Especially Mr. Chief would not want the talents of the country to become killers overnight due to immature minds. He had to gather his men and tell them to follow him. Their job is to protect the Gao Hao. Mr. Kan is indeed a reasonable man. He has a deep admiration for him. As soon as Gao Hao came out, everyone started calling him a bastard and a murderer. The Immortal Affairs Bureau is in cahoots with the Gao family. They can't let that bastard go. This herd of fools must first provide proof in their own words. He will convict every one of them of slander and sue them until they are completely ruined. The man ordered the names of those who dared to insult the Zhao family to be written down. The lawyer should also send them all an official summons. Zhang Qincheng appeared and asked the head of the Zhao family to send one summons to him as well. Others thought he must be in an ambush right now. The police chief didn't expect her to be alone. Now the police chief realized he'd been played. This guy really was able to anticipate their countermeasures. This time he'll figure it out on his own. Gao Hao asked to rid them of that smug face. The disciplinary committee has no control over him, and the bureau has no evidence. What can this guy even do? He can only worsen the relationship with his family and end up like that stupid girl Chen Yuan Yuan Yuan. His father immediately slapped him in the face, telling him to shut his filthy mouth. He advised the guy to stop there. There are many capable people in the Zhao family. This man is also a master in the soul purification stage. Chin Cheng can die in the blink of an eye. This kid doesn't need to see powerful families hovering around him. In fact, all they need are alchemist skills. They're just looking for profit. If he dies, no one will even make an enemy in the Zhao family for the sake of a useless dead man. You can't even argue with those words. It's true what they say, the kid's smart. There's no point in fighting over the departed. Chin Cheng only needs to say a word, and the man will put an end to all disagreements between them. In addition, the Zhao family will support him in the future. He also told his lad to apologize for his behavior. Or does his son seriously want to compete with a genius? Gao Hao apologized to Chin Chen. He doesn't like the pointless feuding either, and these endless grudges. The girl did not understand the meaning of her brother's actions. The others already thought that he had compromised. The woman called him a scoundrel, and how stupid his daughter was. He really wants to end this feud, so he asked Gao Hao to die. His father immediately became angry. He can't let his child die? The crowd screamed for the main character to kill him. They immediately rushed to the defense of the people. A woman asked her dead daughter if she had seen it. The boy she had fallen in love with had avenged her with his own hands. The pain they had caused Chin Chung yesterday would return to them tenfold today. Gao Wenqian shouted that this trashy kid would die today. They'll see about that. Suddenly the fire hit the man. He shouldn't hope that Xue Jian would allow any of her disciples to be harmed. Mr. Khan and Jiang Yu Yu have arrived. He really did do a similar thing to this Gao Hao right at the bureau door. The man ordered to surround and capture Zhang Qin Cheng. They must not let Gao Wen Qian even touch this guy. Mr. Khan is once again trying to brazenly arrest her student. Does he really want to piss her off like that? Others asked, how dare this teacher obstruct the law? In his own head, memories flashed through his mind. He ordered his men not to move if they wanted to live. He is aware of Director Shui's strength. But if she decides to become an enemy of the Bureau, he, as one of the four great masters, will not be able to turn a blind eye. The woman explained that it wasn't really her wish. All students and staff their academics are opposed to the office. He didn't expect another principal to come here. The old man told the young man not to act rashly. Isn't it the task of adults to be responsible for the actions of youth? The man asked if Teacher Shui was really willing to do such a thing for Zheng Qingcheng. The woman showed her the aftermath of a battle with an army of demons 50 years ago. And it's the result of being infected with corpse poison. The headmaster was horrified and asked if the mistress was superior to them. She replied that except for her, no one had survived that battle. When they died, 
their soldiers turned into the walking dead. She had to give over 90% of her strength to suppress the infection. Otherwise, she'd just become one of them. He could not have expected at all that such a terrifying power really existed. It's been plaguing her day and night ever since. All the while reminding her that one day the demons will return. If one were to give Zhang Chincheng some time, he would definitely achieve immense strength and become an important ally against the evil one. Director Xu isn't in the best shape so he decided to take the showdown. The Academy Principal, the Head Immortal, the Head Li and Su had been considered the four great masters for many years. They had always been considered equals, therefore he would have been encouraged to check it out now. That old man Zhao seems to have lost his mind. He's doing all this for one single student. The old man told the students and teachers to get ready. The guy didn't understand why everyone was acting this way right now. The man started to get angry and asked if they all thought they could get away with it. Suddenly, Dongfeng Jixi, who was the head of the Qian Lun Pavilion, called back to him. He greeted the great master. After a short conversation, he said that Director Shue was indeed a master of his craft. The man told his men to retreat. Everyone was happy about this victory. They were shouting about not taking the dark side. It's the bureau that must get out of here with the Zhao family. Zhang Yuyu asked if her aunt had asked her father for help. Shui Zhan replied that she was just hinting that his future son-in-law was in a little trouble. The girl was immediately embarrassed when the protagonist was called son-in-law. In the back, she was yelling about how she doesn't like this emotionless guy at all. I mean, they're rivals. That bastard shouldn't even dare think he'd be safe under the protection of the school. He swears he will do everything in his power to avenge his son. This man also gets no mercy from the protagonist. He's taken a vow of the soul. He vows to fight to the last drop of blood and challenges the entire Gao family to a duel in three days. He asked the head of the Zhao family if he accepts the challenge. The girl shouted that this man was just provoking Qin Cheng. There was no need to be so reckless. For him it was just great. It's a fight to the death he's in. Something appeared in the sky. This indicated that their contracts were done. This kid should prepare to regret his arrogance. The Zhao family is related to countless famous clans of Tian Chuan. One word would be enough, and in three days, he would have to deal with half of them. The head of the Zhao family can do whatever he wants, but no one will stop the protagonist from ending this man. The girl took hold of his clothes, asking if he even realized what he had just gotten himself into. A trial of life and death is an ancient, valuable contract that transcends all laws. Once signed, it cannot be broken until one of the parties dies. Anti had put in so much effort, and he had chosen to die again to please his impulsiveness. The academy could have taken care of security, but it's too late now. The teacher's council won't be able to intervene. In three days, Zhang Chincheng will have to fight against the Gao family alone. The thing is, the problems won't end as long as Gao Wenqian is alive. The girl recognized what the wound was. It turns out he is the murderer of Chen Yuan Yuan. Chen Ning heard that Roth Gao uses all the connections and gathers masters from all over the city. The guy apologized for making her feel bad about herself again. She decided that in three days, they would fight together. There are too many opponents for one guy to handle. They also heard something from the street. As it turns out, Mr. Can ordered them to secretly protect the main character's relatives. The guy explained that even to that couple, the girl was now no match for him. The battle is nothing like a fight between students. It's enough for a guy if she takes care of her parents in the meantime. Yuanzi asked how he thought he would deal with Gao Wei Qian. The boy replied that it would be very convenient to get a Hong Dong from behind the palm. The fox replied that he was dreaming. Da Ji advised to listen to her girlfriend. The Gola family can really attract a lot of people. The protagonist will be killed as soon as he steps on the doorstep. The current plan is to prevent them from recruiting allies. Most of the families act according to the situation. Given his status as an alchemist, half of them would remain neutral. He heard someone knocking on his door. He thought it was Chen Ning again, but it was Suyun. It seems that their little master was so busy with the matter of the upcoming battle that he had completely forgotten about Sisu's birthday. He hadn't expected her to drop in on him at a time like this herself. But she advised the kid not to think that her family would immediately switch sides if anything happened. They are rather more like the protagonist himself. The guy asked if they were going to the party. She replied that she wanted him to meet her father first. He hadn't expected this turn of events. Su family estate. The girl informed her father that she had brought him. Su Wanshan, who is the head of the Su family and one of the four great masters. The man asked if he didn't expect to see one of the great masters crippled. The guy replied that he thought so. Wanshan also didn't think that a second-rank alchemist would turn out to be such a young guy. Chin Chin wondered at his feet. Was it really the injury that was to blame? Wanshan replied that it was already in the past. 
Given the condition, it's been less than a decade since then. About the causes of the stoic poison, which causes the channels to be depleted, the man realized that this young man truly deserved the title of alchemy genius. Just by looking at him, one could realize a lot about his condition. The boy asked if he could have a closer look. The girl asked the master if he could cure Papa's feet, but her father replied that her girlfriend should not get her hopes up. Over the years, he had visited three alchemists at the Udan school, but they couldn't even identify the poison, let alone cure it. The guy saw the condition his leg was in. All this time, day and night, he was in severe pain. If he had not suppressed the spread of the toxin, he would have died long ago. Poison is not simple, so it was not surprising that the other alchemists had failed. The girl asked if there was no way at all, but that's okay because he had accepted his fate long ago. Still, it's been quite a while. The protagonist stated that he would get him on his feet in three minutes. It was even very hard to believe. Now the guy was using the truth of chaos, recovery. Surprisingly, his legs were actually in normal condition. The guy offered to try to get him up. His legs did move. Finally, those five hard years are over. Now he can stand on his own. The young master has great skill. A grace that is like a benefactor. The boy replied that he had previously practiced this spell. So he was just lucky to identify the poison. Wan Shan inquired about his identity. He also assumed that the guy had dealt with him before. Chin Chung replied that Uncle Su shouldn't ask too many questions. He asked to be told in order, and if there were any other victims besides him. Yuanzi guessed that the guy had noticed it. There could be no mistake. The reason is the demon corpse that was used by the Wu clan. Five years ago, the cattle Li Tian and his son were gone. So the man headed for his estate, but he almost died from an unnamed poison. If the other two masters had not arrived, his life would have been cut short even then. It just can't be. All the preparations, even the usual assumptions could be wrong. All this time, the Wu clan was just playing with them. Banquet Hall. Someone noticed Zhang Chincheng, that second-ranked alchemist, standing there. The man wanted to go over to meet him, but he was stopped. It is said that he challenged Gao Wenqian. Their acquaintances are everywhere here, not to mention their closeness to the Li family. If this guy showed up at Miss Su's birthday party, he's probably looking for an opportunity to ask for help. After poisoning Mr. Su, his family is no longer so powerful. Even though they welcome this kid as an alchemist, but no one would dare to help. The man was thankful to be told about it, as he almost didn't get into trouble. The protagonist to them is like a person who brings bad luck, but who cares about the opinions of such scum anyway? The old man asked if he was worried about the Wu clan. Since the Eli family has been in the Tianchuan for a hundred years, their sphere of influence is very vast. If they really are the Wu clan, the opponent could be anyone present. In that case, the right thing to do would be to focus on the problem with Gao Wenqian. The Zhao family are their main henchmen. If the Li family is interfered with, they are the weakest link now. Since nothing is clear yet, they'll just go with the original plan. The vixen said she liked the little guy. If he survives, she will have some surprise for her. He can't wait for it. It looks like little brother Zhang has also come to celebrate. It was Mr. Li. Everyone greeted him. Someone also said that he had matured a lot since their last meeting. Su Yun Guard stood in front of him and asked him what a member of the Li family was doing here. The boy explained that he had come here to wish Mrs. Su a happy birthday, although he didn't expect to see all the Chin Chen here at all. Tian Yi thought that the kid was preparing for the duel at home, but in reality, it was different. He guessed that the main character had come here to ask for help from the Su family. Mr. Li openly supports the Gao family. After this, no one else would dare to help Chin Cheng. Moreover, who would even dare to refuse Gao Wen Qian? But the guy just kept quiet and looked at the pull and... The protagonist replied that once he dealt with the Zhao family, whether or not he pulls and becomes the next one, if they heard everything correctly, it could be considered a declaration of war. As a second level alchemist, he's made enemies of the Li family. This guy really needs to clear his head. Tian and asked if the guy didn't think that by doing so, he might ruin the relationship of the Li clan with the Su family. Except that Chief Su is paralyzed and lying in bed. He had better think of the consequences and not make such a show. Su Yun's underlings were not willing to tolerate such words, and if he sent a disrespectful message to Tianyi himself, he would drown in a pool of his own blood. He would see if the old cripple could protect him. A father came in with his daughter, and asked if the young one had just called him a cripple. Their master is finally cured of his illness. Tianan didn't realize when he had time to heal his legs. The old man's body shouldn't bother him. He better go back and tell Li Tianyuan to punish his son. Otherwise, he would do it with his own hands. Everyone was confused that someone was able to handle the poison. 
The man replied that God himself was merciful and had given this boy to help the Sioux family. The girl told him, just nodding her head. The father knelt down on purpose for all to see. The young master used divine power to heal the old man's legs. Sue's family will never forget his benefactor. Other family members also bowed, saying they would never forget it. Young master made a life and death pact with Gao Wenqian. They won't dare to interfere. But if other families turn against the kid, the Sioux clan will do anything to punish them. Wenlun told them to obey the Lord's order. Is he really willing to start an entire war for the sake of a mere apprentice? He gives his word. If the family does not intervene, the Sioux family will be left out. Everything depends on their actions. The whereabouts of Zhuan Yuan's sword have not been established yet, so there is no need to stir up conflict. The guy hopes that he won't forget his promise. In three days, Zheng Qingcheng and the Gao family will clash in a fair fight. Although the entire Gao family is just scum, but he shouldn't rush to be happy about it. There are more than enough of them to deal with the student. Wan Zhan apologizes to the young boy and explains that the old man is able to intimidate Li Tianyi. However, he will not fool the eyes of the protagonist. The lad realizes that his legs have been damaged for several years and will take quite some time to fully recover. This was all they could do for him for now. Qin Cheng replied that even alone, he could handle it. Since he needs some materials, he asked Mr. Su to look for them. The girl guessed that it was the ingredients for third grade panacea. The guy's point was more for her improvement. They didn't expect a guy to come up with an idea like that. The protagonist realized it was time for him to come clean. He is in fact an alchemist, not of the second step, but of the fourth step. It's the kind of news I didn't expect. If he is telling the truth, no one will want to antagonize him. Three days later, the Gao family home. The man was informed that they would not be able to oppose the Su family. Yes, and the opponent is probably a fourth stage alchemist. He inquired about what the other houses were saying. The subordinate replied that those who had promised to help could no longer be contacted. And it looks like we can't expect any help from the house either. Mr. Gal is incredibly strong and also has dozens of cultivators under his command. Are they really that intimidated by some brat? But you can't be so careless. This is about avenging his son and the honor of the Gao family. Everything must go perfectly. Since they can't personally participate because of Su's family, then he has another solution. He has heard that Qin Chen has appropriated the heaven-breaking sword given to the Zhao family. However, he does not know that this ball has unusual properties. Once he uses it against them, the Gitudo will take his life. The blade is supposed to be a gift that confirms the strong bonds between families. If anything else happened, he could drink the blood of a supreme ancient bloodline to recreate a body like them and gain near immortality. Now he was curious to see what the protagonist would do. He had reached the peak of the ninth level of key refinement. As soon as his soul power awakens, he can immediately start purifying it. It's time to end the Gao family. Ziming asked the boss if he was really going to go alone. There are hundreds of cultivators out there and he can't handle the crowd. In fact, with this status, it's possible to attract quite a few masters now. If not, one could always ask Zhang Yu or other classmates for help. But he's already made up his mind. Also, the guy doesn't want to get anyone in trouble. Chen Ning shouted for him to come back alive. She asked her aunt to let her in because she wanted to go help him. Zhe Zhen asked why she wanted to help the kid. Weren't they rivals? The girl explained that he would die there. The teacher said that the fight had already attracted the attention of the whole town. But everyone is only talking about the Gao family. As the daughter of the head of the Qianlun Pavilion, taking advantage of her abilities, she will attract a bunch of attention. The girl wanted to object, but the teacher asked her to listen. A few days ago, the Emperor summoned Sui Zhan to his office to discuss the situation of the Xuan Yuan sword. Many years ago, a powerful witch turned human and snuck into the city to search for it. The teacher asked how the girl thought where she might be now. Zhang Yu Yu asked if the Wu clan had found out that the blade hidden somewhere in Tian Chuan. The likelihood of that happening is high. Therefore, it is better for them not to seek attention unnecessarily. She must know the burden their family is carrying. Only this ball is capable of breaking the magic circle that protects humanity. It is also capable of killing the witch ancestor. The outcome of the battle depends on the one in whose hands all the Zhuan Yuan will be. Therefore, even if it's even Qin Cheng or someone else, if her niece's life is at stake, she will sacrifice everything without a doubt. Besides, did the girl really think he would be alone? The people from the ancient martial arts club really came to see him. It's time to return the favor. This is a battle fit for the Ho-Chunk boys. They didn't get on well with the head of the club, but in return for saving him, the club is prepared to take risks. 
The guy replied that they could do whatever they wanted. Also standing there were two of Su Yun's subordinates. The Su family can't intervene, but Wen Lun isn't here on their behalf. Her boyfriend is going to a dangerous place, so she can't just leave him unattended. Also today these guys are not a disciplinary committee, but battle buddies. The main character noticed someone and asked if he told them to stay. The girl replied that half of the freshmen were asking where to go to support him on a voluntary basis. At this rate, the boss will become an idol among students. The entire sophomore Shanki class is here. They won't allow their juniors to be intimidated. The third year has also come to the rescue. They decided to cover for brother Qin Cheng. There were a lot of people following him. He won't let himself let anyone down again. He'll definitely rewrite history this time. The others began to worry, as they had been told that this guy would be alone. They noticed the students of the Tianchuan Academy and Sanyake Academy, and almost all three courses had gathered. But the old man told everyone to calm down, as it was only a handful of students. Today's battle is not only for the dignity of the Zhao family, but also for their existence. If they want to live, they must fight without question. They will fight to the last drop of blood. All of the main character's men also threw themselves into the fight. Seeing all this, he can't stand by either. Everyone has found an opponent. Wen Lun quickly dealt with the people who were against him. But suddenly, the Zhao family's man decided to attack him from behind. Fortunately, Zhang San had his back to him. Numerical advantage doesn't help, because the Zhao elite surpasses them in skill. If they want to win, they have to get rid of the best fighters of the Zhao family. And then finish off Gao Wenqian. Zhang San ordered to cover Zhang Qincheng and move towards the building. Ho Cheng Wu and Zhang Qincheng, combat strength 90. Su Han's combat strength is 80. Chen Ning's combat strength is 60. He noticed how the girl was growing up fast. It's natural. You have to work hard to protect yourself, your little brother. The old man pulled Wang Tao behind him and said that they could only approach the Gao family gate through his corpse. Ho Cheng Wu was immediately worried about his club member. Wang Tao replied that this old man was too strong. The entire ancient martial arts club was interrupted. The protagonist has learned that the value of his skills goes beyond 90. Su Han explained that it was Butler Gao Han. He single-handedly handled three ninth-level cultivators. You also have this old man is also famous for being the first refiner in Tianchuan. Ho Chen Wu told them to go and he would take over this old man. The old man advised the boy to take more men. The guy replied that not this time and called the old man a starper. They wanted to prevent the protagonist from going forward, but Ho Cheng Wu used the wood technique. A trap. They were blocked by trees. Ho Cheng Wu and Zhang San shouted that no one dared to let any bastard from the Zhao family pass the gate. Just over ten people were able to pass. All those who could were the top of the disciplinary committee in the third year. Su Hen stopped them. There was no one on the property at all but them. Could be a trap. Outside the gate, their comrades are giving their lives to buy time. That's why you can't go forward recklessly. There's too much danger ahead. It's a pity that none of them have the skill of soul purification. Otherwise, one could pass through without worrying about anything. There is no such person but there is their immortal lord. The guy's engaged in a spiritual exchange, Dachi. She had never seen a technique like this before. The guy told everyone ten meters behind him to go forward. Fox advised him to take a breath and focus on his surroundings. This would help to awaken all spiritual energy and enter the purification stage. A man had already moved on him to kill him. The girl yelled for him to be careful. The man noticed his weapon snapping. Then the main character dealt with the man. He didn't understand how that was even possible. Chin Chin told everyone to keep their distance and move on. Su Han couldn't believe that he had actually finished off an 8th level Qi assassin with a single swing of his sword. More attackers were already moving on him. The kid was using a Taiji Yin and Yang blade. He dealt with two more people. Behind him another new man attacked, but the guy managed to dodge it after which he chopped the man up. The man didn't realize if he was already a master of soul purification. He canceled the spiritual exchange. The guy announced that all the Zhao mercenaries were finished. But is a man capable of such a thing? When using spiritual energy, it seems that people's speed slows down by 10, comparable to the power of purification masters. The skills of the fox he borrows only for a while. But the Gao Wenqian he is about to fight is a true master of soul purification. They're in place. The others started shouting to rush in, surround that dog and kill Wen Qian. Dazi replied that it was too easy. We have to be careful. Suddenly, a magic circle appeared beneath them. They didn't understand what was happening now. Su Han announced that if they wanted to live, they needed to transfer all their mana to her. Luckily, they have a magic shield. Otherwise, they'd be in trouble. The spell is too strong, and this shield won't last long. If this keeps up, they'll be buried alive. The guy thought it was time for an ace up his sleeve. 
Yuanzi told him to take his time. The power of souls is limited in use. The next time will be the last time. Therefore, it was necessary to save it for the main battle. Here, he should rely on his comrades. The girl assumed that this was the work of Gao Wenqian. Su Han told him to go ahead. They can handle it here. But the guy didn't want to leave so easily. The truth was that there was no time to hesitate. If he continued to use up mana, there would be no chance of victory. Everyone's life is in the hands of the protagonist. The guy asked him to finish listening. He's an alchemist. He handed them a potion that can restore all mana. There's about a hundred of them. They can drink it when they need it. You don't have to act like they're saying goodbye to their lives. You'll only make them laugh. One jar is worth 50 million yuan. There's at least 5 billion on the floor. It seems that he will have a serious conversation at home. Finally, it was Gao Wenqian's turn. The guy wondered if the Gao family usually lived in the netherworld. Fox shouted that then they also decided to fight outside. It's a natural technique and illusions. Phantasmagoria, a gaze of despair. Suddenly someone's hand was caught in his leg. He wanted to get rid of that hand, but she belonged to a Yuan Yuan, who shouted that it was all his wine. Gao Wenqian helped her become an evil spirit to take revenge. He hadn't expected to see a vengeful spirit here. She impaled him. Justice must be done, Yuanzi asked, wondering why he froze. The protagonist replied that her death was really his fault. Therefore, it is perfectly normal to hate. The girl offered to leave together. He already wanted to answer her. Daji smacked him on the head and said that it was not enough for a fake to confess his love yet. Go Wenqian's ability prevents him from manipulating the souls of the dead. It creates a multiple illusion. She won't let the protagonist die from a cheating technique on her own watch. The man called him a chump and wished him to perish in endless shame. Yuan Yuan pounced on him again, wishing for them to die together. But he just pushed her away. They don't have to play with feelings of grief. The man didn't realize what had just happened. He, however, was consumed with sadness. He decided to use something else. Through spiritual resonance, the strongest opponents that exist in the mind of a Wen Qian appeared. The illusion may not harm the body, but it traumatizes the soul and can even kill. It can destroy copies with the power of unification. But the guy didn't reply that his opponent hadn't shown up yet. So you can't go with Trump. He senses the movement of primordial chaos. Spiritual perception has pumped up his soul power quite a bit. If it is possible to destroy his illusion by his own efforts, he may be able to begin purification at once. Young Master Li uses the Gao fighting technique. It was too easy. The Su Yun fire technique and the Zhang Yu Yu lightning technique simply couldn't be that weak. The guy demanded that Gao Wen Qian come out, for his plan had failed. All the glasses cracked. Another hand appeared behind him. It was Chen Ning. The girl asked if the guy was okay. The guy didn't realize what had just happened at all. She replied that they lost their position when the protagonist headed towards Gao Wen Xian, just stopping at the entrance. It turns out he didn't even enter there, but it's really over now. But the protagonist didn't let himself be fooled. She didn't understand how he guessed that he even had time to react. He knew that the real Chen Ning wore shorts shorts. The reason for the failure of the strongest illusion technique is because he's just a damn pervert. There's a small scar left on my soul, but there's no wound. It's still a hell of a pain. It is indeed not easy to break such a thing at the level of qi management. Yenzi wondered how he even knew he was wearing Chen Ning. Dazi called him a pervert. The guy really couldn't even guess that was all they heard. Gao Wen Qian appeared in front of him and asked if he was now satisfied. The protagonist knows that the Zhao family does not practice phantasmagoria. And what happened earlier is nothing more than probing the ground. One of them has to die today. They immediately rush to attack each other. This blade made specifically for a heaven-shattering sword. If it wasn't for Jen's reinforcement, this strike would have been the last one. Wen Qian didn't expect that he would actually be able to withstand this strike. The threefold spirituality and the seven unclean spirits are about to show themselves. This little one is ready to embark on the path of soul purification. Tai Chi Sword, Qing Lun Tail Swish. The man used distance reduction. After which, he immediately appeared in front of the main character. The shortcomings of Wen Qian techniques will not be hidden by Tai Ji Jiang. But is he really sure of that? The Tai Chi punch is perfect, but the man takes it with the strength of his soul. The main character's movements are too slow. Xin Qin's techniques are perfectly honed, however the mana consumption he thinks is not small. The truth was that the only thing an alchemist had to worry about was a lack of resources. He took the pill and was as good as new. The longer this guy fights, the stronger he gets. It's pretty weird. He was able to intimidate Wen Qian without even half purifying his soul. If the process had been completed, he would have lost without a doubt. But the guy was actually worried about the others. We need to end this soon. 
he wanted to team up with Daji. The man looked at the vial that Li Tianyi had given him before the fight. The guy immediately used shower unification, and the man drank the contents of this vial. Upon seeing the protagonist, he didn't realize what kind of power this was in the first place, but he abruptly began to scream, after which the man called Li Tian and bastard. It's chilling to the core. It's like a witch's blood curse. The blood will be mixed with the bloodline, resulting in a tenfold increase in strength, but the body and mind will gradually decay. Li Tian and tricked him. This is not a power that humans can control. By drinking the witch's blood and forcibly changing himself, he will begin to turn into a walking corpse that can only kill. In other words, he would simply become the witch's puppet. So what about Togo? The protagonist killed his son, ruined his family. Even if he turns into a gutless zombie, he'll still do what he has to do. If he drinks this blood, then the Gitu Dao will awaken. For him, this power was too satisfying. Now he could even match even the four great masters. The witch's blood curse increases his physical strength, defense, and speed tenfold. He asked Daji to raise his perception to the limit, after which he used spiritual unification and also the true body of chaos. There will be no one here stronger than himself. The transformed man also attacked him. They faced off in battle. The kid used true chaos bodies, and despite the equal strength, this sword is still more powerful than Tianjian. All or nothing. But unfortunately, his blade didn't hold up. After which, Wen Qian sealed him into the wall. It's even expected. Ordinary people aren't even close to the noble Wu lineage after all. The restraining amulet, the difference in cultivation, the manipulation of the bloodline. This battle isn't fair at all. The men were originally advised to surrender, and now death would not be long in coming. But you can't even tell from the man's face that he's happy about his victory. His son is dead and his family is destroyed. Even he himself has already become a corpse. All because of a girl who doesn't even have anything to do with him. He regrets that he indulged his child, that he trusted his family, and became an enemy of the protagonist. But there's no going back now. The guy, however, replied that pity is for the weak. Wen Qian told him, repeating it again. The guy, however, reiterated that he had no regrets. He won't lose to anyone from the Wu clan. That decision was made back then. This man has to die right now. Before he blows off that insolent youngster's head and sacrifices it on his son's grave, let Qin Cheng try to do so. Yanzi shouted to Dazi to be ready to instill herself into Zhang Qingcheng and use her false moon to escape. The fox replied that she knew it herself. He was able to block that blade. After that, the kid used the true chaos body. 10%. He didn't realize what kind of power this kid had. It was growing and wouldn't stop. But his body isn't changed by mana. The entire bloodline is being rewritten. Mankind was created by the goddess Nyua in the likeness of Pangu. The technique of true chaos, developed by Lao Tzu, was aimed at developing only the human race to fully recreate the first man. The characteristic of association increased from 5% to 10%. This means the true chaos kid's body is evolving again. The guy confessed that he owns one amazing thing called a shower room. Everyone only wants to reach the pinnacle of power, but I don't know that there is something else important besides the hall. It's the ancient heroes and their past deeds. He likes to listen to another story and cry like a baby every time. Wen Qian asked what soul hall this guy was talking about and what kind of nonsense it was. As an unremarkable man without any history, he envies them so much. He really envies them a lot. The spirits of the heroes are always with a complex character, or with a difficult fate. But without exception, they all stick to one thing. Namely, the path they believe is the right one. Let Chen Yuanyuan's death forever be on his conscience, he is still a brilliant alchemist who won the influence of the Zhao family. Now he can shake a lot of money from people for the rest of his life. But the truth is, he's a very cowardly man. He only dreams of the simple pleasures of married life, namely to spend the rest of his time with Chen Nin in peace. However, every time he closes his eyes, all the stories of those characters he longs for and looks forward to seeing come to mind. So one day, he decided to become like them. The two spirits immediately began to worry about him. Let his body be restrained, the feeling of love have to be stifled, and the whole world is set against him. There are only two words, namely, the right way. This boy has taken and overcome a period of soul purification. He can't listen to these snotty stories anymore. It's time for him to go to the other side of the world. The protagonist called for a hall of showers. The force caused the man to bounce back. He still didn't understand what this power was. The kid felt the pillars of calm and rage fill in. The memories of the Chu Realm's ruler arriving began to flash through his mind again. He heard that Gan Jiang is the best alchemist in the Celestial Empire, so he wants to ask him to forge him the strongest ball. Would this master refuse the sovereign? 
but a man wouldn't dare do that, and he'll get what he wants. The ruler gave him three months, and as soon as he was finished, he would be expected at his place. It takes at least three years to forge a weapon like this, just to temper it. But they were given no more than 90 days. If a man did not meet the deadline, the governor would be angry and punish him. Prince Chu is just a reckless man with the blood of the Wu clan in his veins. It would be better to cast a magic sword to defeat him. Although he was forced, he doesn't plan to break his promises even if he dies. The name of the first alchemist must remain his. And so they embarked on a journey, at the end of which a pair of yin and yang magic balls were cast. However, it had taken more than three years. The Chu ruler who had burned through so much time was already burning with rage. Presented with this sword, death still awaits him. He told his wife to hide the yin blade, but if the ruler comes for it, no doubt she must give it up. His family's life is far more important. The two of them were crying. The girl said that she understood everything. Chu's rulers asked if the man knew that disobedience was punishable by death. The ruler asked, even though he had come here with a blade, what his last words would be. The man explained that this sword was now just one step away from completion. He asked to borrow the emperor's tripod. And so they stood before the emperor's tripod. The man jumped in without a second thought and asked me to tell his wife to live a happy life and not to think of taking revenge. No one expected him to jump in there. He tempered his sword, utilizing his body's energy. This really is a true alchemist. They are all saddened by his early death. A woman asked her son if he wanted to take revenge on her for his father. The boy replied that he did. But the ruler has the blood of the Wu clan in him. It won't be easy to pierce his immortal body. The woman wondered, knowing his father, why he had sacrificed himself. It is said that in the deepest antiquity, the emperor fused the flesh and blood of all mankind, tempering the sword to kill the ancestor Wu. Before the death of the great Hong Yun, the blade was passed on to the human race. The yellow emperor Zhuan Yuan famously killed Qi Yu with this sword. Therefore, the weapon is now called Zhuan Yuan, though the blood and flesh of a thousand human lives would be better than their lives, Sacrificing to the sword would make it much easier to kill the king. The woman also decided to sacrifice herself. She heard the boy screaming at her not to do so. He challenges the ruler of Chu to a duel. He wishes to avenge the deaths of his parents. A 16-year-old youth, equipped with the sword Moye, whose name belonged to his mother, entered the palace alone. And no one could stop him. In the end, the Chu ruler was killed. And so was the child who rebelled against the throne. At the end of the battle, the pair of swords disappeared as if they had never existed. Ganjiang and Moya. This is the same treasure that is mentioned in the story of the spirit of the fallen hero. But it is both the soul of the hero and a magical weapon. He asked permission from his ancestors for this ignoramus to adopt their dreams and desires. In this life, no one of the clan will prevail. Despite their numbers, they will still fall. He blocked the punch. After that, the guy activated Taiji Yangjian, Ganjiang. Once again, the man still didn't understand anything. The protagonist was finally ready to finish off his opponent. But the man didn't think about how easy it was to wonder either. True, his sword was beginning to crack. The guy kept coming at him. Ganjian and Mei combined the power of Taiji and Yin Yang. It's as if all the power of the Mei has been gathered together. These swords are designed to kill the people of the Wu clan. The guy said it was over. The man also attacked him so that the protagonist died. Suddenly, the circle disappears. That means the winner has been decided. Su Han inquired, and who won? Ho Chen Wu recognized that this old man was really strong. It's a real monster, not a human being. Wen Lun said that this kid also inspires fear. He had interrupted almost everyone. Zhang San explained that when Chen Wu was injured, he was only a little weaker than Qin Chen. So, what to speak of his current condition? From here on, everything depends only on the protagonist. The old man, however, replied that the chapter was not so easy to defeat. Gao Wen Qian walked out to them. They thought the protagonist might have lost. But that's impossible. The Wu clan is immortal. With those words, he fell to the floor. Following him, the main character came out and explained that nature is imperfect. There are no immortals in this world. Plus, he has wisdom, passed down through generations by countless souls of heroes. This wisdom is enough to destroy all living things. Marks appeared on his hands. Everyone began to celebrate their victory. Chen Ning was glad that the guy was alive. She was already starting to think bad thoughts when she saw that man come out. He promised to come back alive. They noticed the staring eyes on them, after which the girl replied that they were only friends. The protagonist replied that she was just a fan. Cheng San and Wen Lun were happy that Gao Wen Qian had been killed and the kid had won. In the end, the Gao family lost. Ho Chengwu knew that the protagonist would not fail. 
the kid approached the Zhao family's butler and asked that he take responsibility for the lives of the rest of the Zhao family. The old man shouted that from now on, there would no longer be a single person from the Zhao family who would ever become an enemy to Zhang Qingcheng. Everyone was praising the main character. He himself remembered how the academy had burned then and about that incident, and how his acquaintances had died then. The boy promised himself he'd never let them be disturbed. The protagonist asked where Liu Jiming had gone. It was explained to him that this kid had just now run away and explained that he needed to return to the academy urgently. The chairman and the director of Su should be informed. He went back to the loser. It's bloody blood, really nasty stuff. What happened in his past life must never happen again. He would no longer watch the tragedy at the academy like a fool. The Li family is just one step away from uncovering the truth about the emergence of the Wu clan. The girl reported that a message from Zhang San had arrived and the contract had been fulfilled. Zhang Qingcheng had won. Who would have thought that this boy would single-handedly massacre the entire Zhao family house? She sensed that some powerful aura was rapidly approaching just to their location. Tian Chuan's hidden man of the Wu clan had finally appeared. The protagonist clearly felt it too. They certainly didn't expect this turn of events. That disgusting odor is so familiar it cuts into your marrow. The guy doesn't even need to turn around because he can't even be wrong about it. The creature behind him is the ancestor of Wu. In his past life, he was the one who attacked Tian Chuan. Guanzi and Dazi began to tell him to save himself, for he was in no condition to fight now. He would be killed in an instant and could only hope for nine false moons. The Wu clan's clan forefather reached out to him. His mind immediately brought back memories of running through the students, and also the way he mourned Chen Ning's death. In the demon's hands was Zhang Yuyu, who was crushed in the same second. The guy was screaming that this demon was going to end. He immediately lunged at that demon and wished to finish him off with his own hands right there. But the guy realized that everything was repeating itself, but this time Wu with Di Zhang's bloodline. Its ability and sufficient to impact space. The pre-lord of the Wu clan told this inferior sort to just disappear. The boy noticed that he was splitting apart. Yuanzi and Dazi immediately shouted out the name of the main character. The guy explained that no time or space spell would help anything. He had been preparing for this moment since the beginning of his rebirth. Just a short wait and he would be able to use a technique that would be enough to kill instantly. But there's only one shot. He noticed the fire. Upon recognizing that someone else was here, he immediately snubbed the reception. It was Zhui Zhen who turned to the ancestor of the Wu clan. What a long time she's been chasing this ancestor. After which the girl turned her attention to Gao Wenchen's corpse. No wonder the Wu clan had already been in Tian Chuan for several years. He won't have an escape route today. Hundreds of fire runes. She combined them. It's a forbidden technique in Jing. This woman is the strongest fire lord she has ever known. The girl was shocked that her aunt actually used a battle dragon. The Wu clan's clan forefather asked if this flame could burn out time and space. A spark can only ignite once no matter how bright it is. It's meaningless. But this one time is enough. He touched Gao Wenqian. After which they disappeared, saying that there was a better way for him to die. She abruptly began coughing up blood. Zhang Yuyu and Qin Cheng were immediately worried about her, not realizing what was wrong. Principal Xu started to fall but her niece caught her in time. Could it have been poison? The guy replied that it was an unusual poison and an adverse reaction after taking the cursed blood. Zhu accepted the Wu blood without a doubt. But he didn't understand her connection to the Wu clan. Zhang Yuyu began to scream, not understanding how to act now. He took Xue Zhan in his arms. The girl asked what he was doing. Qin Cheng replied that if she wanted to save her aunt, she should listen to him. He laid her on the bed. Whereupon the guy told Yuan Zi to leave, for he would do everything himself. He told the girl to take off all the teacher's clothes and her underwear too. Zhang Yuyu resisted and immediately asked what he was up to. The protagonist replied that if she didn't want her dead, she should do as told. Still, the girl agreed to do it. The boy noticed that the poison had already spread enough. If someone else had been in her place, he would have been a corpse long ago. The protagonist has engaged the truth of chaos restoration, after which the guy touched her body. Zhang Yuyu blushed and asked where he had spread his paws. The girl also shouted out, does it really have to be touched there too and called him a stinking pervert. Yuanzi listened to all of this passionately. She couldn't look at it anymore and ran away. With these doors, she struck Yuanzi. Eating has gotten a little better after all. Suazan inquired. He suppressed the poison. The guy remarked that he didn't suppress it but absorbed it. It's the most serious infection he's ever seen. The bloody blood has penetrated deep into the organs. There may even be something left even now. His practices involve forgiveness of all things, but there is no way to deal with such poison. She replied that it was a miracle to meet a guy. 
Zhang Yuyu inquired as to how the Wu clan's poison ended up in her body. In order to kill the demon, she decided to take the cursed blood herself, but it was consuming her more and more every day. The boy asked if she could hurry up to get dressed. As they undressed her, she didn't see him embarrassed. Well, of course men are all hypocritical. The guy, however, replied that he was forced to do it. She asked how long she had left. If he uses the force, the poison will begin to spread immediately. In that case, the effect is no longer reversed. Using mana for constant suppression and additionally using the chaos technique once a month, then she could probably live for three years. Or his powers would grow in those three years, and he could heal her completely. The girl fell to her knees and just couldn't believe what the guy had just told her. Su Jan apologized for hiding it from her. It was clear to him now. He had always wondered, having been a disciple of Dongfang Jushi in his past life, why he had never heard of Xue Zhan. Progenitor Wu's strength had only increased now. In her past life, all the Tianchuan cultivators had united, but there was no chance of victory. It was pointless to publicize that she had been beheaded by the four great masters back then. He fears that it was Xue Zhan who killed the demon, but she died from the cursed blood. However, the Qian Lun Pavilion to cover up the case of Xue Zhan completely erased all the information, and it turned out that the four great masters were the assassins. All in all, it makes sense. Most likely, this secret case is the key to the reason for the demon's attack on Tian Chuan. Apparently, the ultimate link to find out the truth of the Wu demon attack is here. The niece spoke to her aunt about not letting her die. Xue Zhan replied that it was a pity, but it would no longer be possible to kill the demon with her own hands. No wonder she's still single. The war never leaves her lips. That's why she'll remain a maiden. Xue Zhan got angry and asked why he even cared about it and she didn't like it herself either. Zhang Yuyu asked her to calm down somehow. After that, the teacher simply told them to get off her back. Zhang Yuyu forbade the boy from getting personal. He wondered why some teacher had kept the poison in her for so long, and also why the head of the disciplinary committee also knew about the cursed blood. She also knew that only the primordial chaos technique could suppress this bloodline. But the technique had always been under the control of the Eastern Emperor Wang Sheng. Therefore, the woman wondered how he learned it. It turns out Zhang Qincheng was practicing a primordial chaos technique that not even the emperor's cousin's sister had practiced. Only he can heal the teacher, but she must be honest in return. Since he saved her life, there's no reason to hide it anymore. Zhang Yu is afraid that when this kind of ordinary person finds out about her and auntie's identity, he will start licking his heels in fright. He had guessed their identities long ago. Perhaps the purpose of coming to the city was the clue. She is the first counselor of the Dong Lun Kingdom and an elder of the Qian Lun Pavilion that the Bureau single-handedly established. She came here to find the Xuan Yuan sword. After meeting the demon, she was even more convinced that this sword was definitely hidden in the Tian Chuan. And now it was time for the identity of Jiang Yu Yu to be revealed. Originally, the girl wanted to communicate with the guy as a normal person, but it looks like she will have to reveal herself now. She is actually the head of the Qian Lun Pavilion called Dong Fang Yu, and at the same time the daughter of the elder of the Kunlun school. Her highness is thus one of the heirs to the throne of the Dunlun kingdom. But the guy didn't care about that at all. Now it all adds up. The demon's attack in his past life was not random. The man of the Wu clan had been hiding in the Tian Chuan for a long time, increasingly enslaving clansmen to discover the whereabouts of the Xuan Yuan sword. It wasn't until half a month later that it became known why the demon had attacked the academy probably because the sword was there, so the Wu clan decided to act no matter what. But it wasn't because the demon attacked on that day. Only after discovering the sword would the Wu clan be ready to strike. The girl wondered if he was so frightened. He should put his feelings in order, for she liked the rebellious look in the guy so much. But right now, neither Zhui Zhan nor the demon had discovered anything. It turns out that he has so much information in his hands that they couldn't even dream of. The girl replied that he might not fall to his knees. Now, in order to prevent tragedy, one would just need to find a sword faster than that demon. Therefore, it would be better to join forces with Hui Zhan. She wanted to know where he'd learned such a thing. He showed the source of all things. The girl didn't understand what he was talking about at all. Yuanzi assumed that it was the same sword that belonged to Hong Yun. At that time, the Yao clan occupied a larger palace and the Wu clan was wreaking havoc on the land. To oppose him, the Yao organized a genocide of the human race. At the cost of the blood of a billion people, a sword was forged that could deal with the demon race. 
Hong Yun couldn't bear the extinction of humans, and taking a sword blank with her, she went alone to the god's palace. But she never imagined that she would be killed by twelve demons. As she took her last breath, she held her sword in her hands and caught his eye. Hong Yun wished to pour her soul into the assassin's blade, thus giving birth to the Celestial Celestial Empire's first lethal weapon called the Purple Blood Blade. It protected the human race from generation to generation, endlessly reborn. And then in the era of the three rulers and five emperors, Chi Yu led the demon army. Having been reborn as a fairy of the nine heavens, Hong Yun granted Huang Di a purple bloody blade. Thus, she provided support in defeating Chi Yu. People didn't know the real name of the blade. Therefore, it was called the Xuan Yuan Sword. It was strange, since he didn't even know where that sword could be right now. He could clearly see that there was no trace of purple blood on her body. Da Ji asked Zhen Yuan who he was talking about. A little later, great ancient deity, ancestor of demons, please bless your descendants to banish mankind. Let the demons return to this earth. The victim was Li Tianyi himself. He shouted, it was his father who was worried about his son. If people want to gain the power of Clan Wu without being consumed by voodoo and aborted into a corpse, they must obey the demons and keep renewing fresh blood on the damned. But Li Tianan betrayed him, annexing large clans without authorization. Moreover, he hid the blood he was given to destroy the outsider. By doing so, he had offended the ancient deity. Li pulls and asks to stop. He doesn't want to become a demon corpse. Has the vile brat forgotten how his mother died? She began to cry, remembering about her mother. Memories flashed through his mind that he no longer wanted to know the protagonist. But he also wouldn't let the scum bully him anymore. He told his father that he understood everything. He needs strength to protect his friends. The father told the boy to go with him. The boy was shaking with terror. The child bore and possessed the accursed blood. Now they will become immortal servants of God. The woman was screaming about whether Tian Yuan had gone mad. Tian and their child. Does he really want to turn his son into the same monster? The woman cried and told the baby not to be afraid, because mommy was already there. She wanted to destroy all the demons and the whole Li family with her own hands. But suddenly someone poked her. That was Li Tian Yuan, the end of betrayal to the demon god. A mother fell on top of her son. But for some reason, he blamed it all on Zhang Qingcheng. If it wasn't for that kid, his mom would still be alive. How could he stoop to this kind of behavior? The man began to explain that he didn't want to end up like his foolish mother, and he wasn't betraying the demon god. He did annex the clans, gave Gao Wen Qian cursed blood, but it was all for just the Wu clan. If he has something to say, he should do it. This is his last chance. Zhang Qingcheng had shown a strength that was comparable to God many times. If left to his own devices, he would definitely prevent the Wu clan from taking possession of the Zhuan Yuan sword. Even so, the illegal possession of cursed blood exceeds the guards. Tian Yi admits the mistake and says it won't happen again. His faith in God is immeasurable. This guy's stupidity had dire consequences. Li Tian Yuan asked if there was something that scared him so much. The Wu clan's clan prelate replied that it was Su. She is the strongest fire lord who beheaded his counterpart a hundred years ago. Fortunately, she doesn't have that much strength in her right now. She's as weak as a burning candle in the wind. While we're at it, we should speed up the search for the sword. Only the major clans under his control could help him learn about Hong Yun's reincarnation faster. He loves gifted servants. Great Dai Jiang's sacred blood is beautiful. They must plan every day. It is better to use all the families under their control, even if radical means have to be resorted to. Tanya's not doing it right now either. He asked his mom to bless him. Only by combining all of Tian Chuan's strength would they be able to find this sword. Then we'll fight his father and destroy the Wu clan. Only he is worthy to be the savior of mankind. Could it really be the ashes of the saint that the guy from the academy's treasury brought back? According to the teacher, it was found in the ruins, a celestial abode that had disappeared without a trace. If he understands correctly, the place to find this replica should be at the bottom of the Wat Tian Chuan. Shui Zhan asked how he knew that. The guy explained that he had already been there. All gags aside, he once considered throwing himself into the sea, and the reason for the suicide was Chen Ning's death. A lot of people didn't understand why this guy was the only one who survived. He sacrificed so many lives to save his worthless one. How else can he still live so peacefully? He must be related to the Wu clan, so we need to examine him. The father was yelling for them to get out of here. His son was also hurt. You can't keep harassing him. But suddenly the man was seized by his heart. They called an ambulance for him. But it was too late. That money saved by his father. 4. He doesn't want to do the operation, and said that with their help, the boy will be able to enroll in Sianqi. 
Mom didn't understand why he would do such a stupid thing. It was all because of him. He couldn't take care of Chen Ning, leading his father to his grave. The boy didn't understand why he was the only one left. He doesn't even have the right to live. He pounded deeper and deeper down. Some voice was telling the kid to wake up. He should open his eyes. An immeasurable threat is coming. Da Dao is 50. Tian Yang is 49. They still have glimmers of hope. He was given the Hall of Souls and the brilliance of primordial chaos. Why you that voice was familiar to him. But the boy didn't realize who was calling him. It was a Taoist temple. The doors of the temple opened before him, and inside was a hall of heroic souls. He reached for that hall. The shower hall cries out for a host. The Lord of Men, Yellow Emperor Xuan Yuan, appeared in front of him. He heard all the thoughts of the boy. He will honor the protagonist from the title of Emperor. Afterward, he asked the boy if he would join forces with him to stop the Wu clan and drive them out of this land, till death do them part. Then, filled with guilt and hatred, he lived and trained at the temple. In order to defeat the Wu clan, he decided to completely shut himself off from the world and harden himself, eventually turning into a single murder weapon. The Empress walked into him and reported that hundreds of demons had raided the Northwest. Numerous troops of the Seusian Alliance had been destroyed. He'll get over it quickly. It won't affect his future practice much. Since he's been here, he's only been busy doing two things. Practicing, killing demons, then practicing again, and so on. Is he really not interested in the affairs of state and the position of the Emperor? The boy asked the master how long she thought it would take for the Wu clan to destroy the human race. He asked her how long she thought it would take the Wu clan to destroy the human race. He doesn't have so much time to waste on earthly matters. He needs to catch up not only with his master, but also with the 20 demons who had received the power of the ancestor. He called himself a loser. To have the opportunity to atone for your own weakness is worth a lot. He's just an ordinary man, a lowly passerby who has no talent for anything. His only goal is to try his best to defeat the demons. He won't allow himself to be helpless anymore. The reason for the suicide is so ridiculous. This is bullying by Gao Hao. But as soon as he reached the bottom of the sea, he saw the very abode of the Celestials. He could not enter it, but he went around it from all sides. There he saw a fragment called the Position of Comprehending Chaos. Daji replied that the guy was lying. The soul is in an unstable state. No wonder he's holding that trinket. Turns out he's been to those ruins too. It all makes sense now. The guy asked if Teacher Xu had found anything there. She had gone down there for a thorough search, hoping to find the Zhuanyuan sword hidden there. They were shrouded in mysterious power. And as soon as it touched the door, the temple immediately disappeared. There was only time to grab the useless relic at the entrance. She thinks that this abode was erected by a certain generation of emperors. And only people selected by the true chaos have the right to enter there. He was definitely picked out by his handsome face. She really doesn't seem to know anything about this place. GPO Wen Qian personally confessed that he got the cursed blood from Li Tianyi. He saw the girl going somewhere and asked what was wrong. She replied that it would soon be dark and whether the family was still alive. She absolutely can't go in there. She asked him if he was too brave. He shouldn't even think about stopping her. The memory of his master having a daughter immediately flashed before his eyes. She sacrificed herself to protect the protagonist. You can't turn against demons, you can't even think about it. She was saying he should stop underestimating her. The guy was telling that crazy woman to come down to earth. Those lightning bolts struck him as well. Marks appeared on his hands. They were traces of bloody blood. He has a great technique for containing the side effect. The way he is cured is by inhaling voodoo using the chaos technique. He believes that Li Tian Yuan and has already managed to reach such a Wuhua level. Not to mention Li Pul Yuan, much less the Wu clan. She recognized his point. The power of the Wu clan is unfathomable. Once infected, Teacher Shue would no longer be able to use spells. Their only chance of victory is to find the Xuan Yuan sword. Daji praised him for fooling the two girls of the Qian Lun Pavilion. But he has only been cultivating for a month. He has such an ambition to fight the Wu clan. But Yuan Zi is afraid that he definitely won't have enough. The bloody blood had reappeared on him. But he told them not to worry, because everything was more or less normal. Silhouettes of people he knows appeared above him. If I count Shui Zhen, he had absorbed the poison of Su Wan Shan and Gao Wen Qian. This is just crazy. If this keeps up, he'll soon turn into a demon corpse. But this was the only way to save Su Wan Shan and Shui Zhen. Devouring the cursed blood was also a way to become stronger. It was as if he had turned into an actual demon corpse. The memory of his demonic body flashed through his mind again. A woman's hand came to his face. The progenitor of the earth. Mother of Bhavachakra Kautu. 
She spoke of no time left and immeasurable disaster looming. He must accept the blood of the Wu clan. This is the last glimmer of hope. He didn't expect to see the Mother of the Earth Hotu there at all. As it turned out, in his past life, he had absorbed the blood of a demon progenitor and died. But the right reason was the concentration of the powers of Xuan Yuan, God Dun Huang, Buddha Tathagata, and others. And also a common death with the Pangu. It's just an unfathomable disaster. The guy didn't understand what else it was at all. It was unclear why there were two different memories of his past life in his head. He seems to have forgotten something very important. Daji saw that he too had noticed something strange. How can he even be absorbed? Something like this. They stared at the protagonist and his change with incomprehension. He now had 400 points of combat power. She noticed that the demon's blood was really amazing. After absorbing it, its soul purification level could be raised to the fourth level. With his current power, he was getting closer and closer to Li Tianyi as well as Zhang Yu Yu. A Gao Wen Qin level master that he fought more is not a problem. He seems to have completely suppressed the cursed blood side effect. When creating a human being, the goddess Niua, let us say, tried to accommodate in one body three forces, namely immortals, demons, and monsters. The goddess, for example, tried to combine three powers, namely immortals, demons, and monsters, in one body. And as an apprentice to the goddess, she watched the process of human creation with her own eyes, and they thought she had so much experience. Having mastered the chaos technique, he is the closest to perfection. The guy's body can hold the blood of monsters, the blood of demons, and the blood of immortals all at the same time. Everything is only good until the cursed blood surpasses the mana limit. Yuanzi asked what would happen if it exceeded it. In that case, he hopes these guys can kill him quickly. I'd rather die than turn into a mindless monster. The old man inquired, in order to deal with the Wu clan, does he really have to do that? Guy, on the other hand, asked if the old man one day discovered that he had the ability to start over and save Hong Yun, what would he do? Even if one has to descend to the hell of eternal torment, meet the Rahu, suffer the ancestor demon sticks, he will still save her. Being born immortal naturally doesn't realize that most people do everything they can to simply survive. In his past life, he held on to his so-called dignity, rejected the cursed blood and eventually lost to the Wu clan. Only now can he finally recognize that if humans want to confront the superior race, it is only by taking possession of their own power. Chen Yuan went house. Her mom sat beside her daughter's dead body, but suddenly the girl opened her eyes. The protagonist flew the sword. He felt sorry that Yuan Yuan had died, but Gao Wenqian is already dead. Therefore, he hoped that her spirit in heaven could find peace. Arriving at the dead girl S house, her mother ran out to him, telling him to come here quickly. The lid of the coffin, Yuan Yuan open. He noticed that the Nine Moons technique was working on her for some reason. He immediately turned to Dadzi and asked if she had done it. The fox had already spoken, hadn't she? If he were to kill Gao Wenqian, there would be one surprise waiting for him. When Yuan Yuan was at death's door, the guy had used nine false moons on her. Now the vixen had just put them into action. But didn't she herself say that this technique is only effective on herself? In response, however, the vixen asked what if Chen Yuan Yuan was herself? They were just in the deepest shock. At first it thought it was a mere coincidence, but now she is certain that Yuan Yuan is her reincarnation. If her heroic soul fused with the Yuan Yuan, then she would then be able to use the nine false moons on the girl. At the same time, it means that she will no longer be able to part with the Yuan Yuan. If the illusion is dispelled, she will die. This is an unprecedented case of a hero's spirit leaving the host and becoming possessed by another person. But he shouldn't be so worried. In essence, she was created by the Hall of Souls. Being in a different body, the protagonist would still be able to point to her. It sounds like that, but it's more like it's as if Daji is using the Yuan Yuan body to try to achieve a soul materialization that he was unable to complete due to insufficient cultivation. In theory, what would result from their fusion is still equivalent to the host soul. Sharing his life and cultivation with him, the attachment to the soul hall wouldn't go anywhere. The choice is up to the protagonist. He must trust Chen Yuan Yuan. Sometimes he can't trust himself, let alone another person. Foxy already wanted to say something to that, but he decided that the hero's spirit would leave the body. From here on, Daji will do everything on your own. She didn't understand, since the guy had said earlier that he couldn't trust them. But it's not about trust. Chen Yuan Yuan died because of him. It's his way of repaying his debt. Moreover, after acquiring his own body, becoming of the same cultivation level as him, Daji would not only be able to act on his own, 
but would also be of incomparable help to him. 9 False Moons Break the laws of nature. Fix yourself to another body. The girl fell to the ground. She's awake. Yuan Yuan remembered everything clearly, but she still didn't understand what had happened. Tears came to her mom's eyes. She couldn't believe that this really wasn't a dream. Her daughter was alive. The woman asked the protagonist what kind of divine magic he used. Yuan Yuan asked if the guy had really saved her. The girl threw herself into his arms and said she thought she would never see him again. Then she called him a fool. The guy, however, asked her to recover because there is no way he can get away from the image of a rebellious girl. She replied that she just wanted to. He assumed it was just one of the side effects of the spell. The fox replied that this little girl truly loved him. The girl started screaming, not realizing what was happening. The guy explained that Dadzi will explain everything to her, but the girl must remember that only they know of her existence. They share the same body now. She too is under the shackles of the Hall of Souls. If she can think of anything to do, the guy can kill her in one fell swoop. Yuanzi noticed that she was a little too happy. The girl asked why not to be happy when her reincarnation was saved. If she even had the thought of betraying Zhang Qingchen, he would kill her without blinking an eye. The fox had indeed hidden something from him. But did he really think that Zhang Qingchen still hadn't noticed anything? Yuanzi remembered that the guy had just said that he didn't even trust himself, let alone others. Apparently he was talking about the fox. She, however, replied that this matter only concerned Qin Chen and the Hall of Souls. If she was in a Yuan Yuan body, she would be able to get more information. But Yuanzi's age is no longer the same. Where's the youth to give him now? Reprehensible wisdom is to be loyal to the House of Li. The last hope of humanity is in their hands. They must let their hands run free and do everything even if the entire city is in ruins. They must find the reincarnation of the Xuan Yuan sword. But if they make too much noise, the Bureau will definitely pay attention to it. It's just a bunch of hooey. Who here doesn't have blood on their hands? If he gets his hands on that sword, he'll be the next Holy Emperor. And they will be considered heroes for centuries to come. Everyone began to praise their Lord Li. He repeated that it was forbidden to lose. Not to mention that his father might discover their plans. This is the last chance to deal with the demon. He thanked the protagonist. Without this guy, he wouldn't have made the decision and approached the matter thoroughly. Shopping center. Now the realization finally reached her that she was not dead, and alive after all. Created from the legends of Dadzi, she is now in the same body as the protagonist. Fox doesn't even know if it's ironic. This guy really changed her life. They had achieved their new life with great difficulty. The fox suggested that they have a good time today. The old man asked if he couldn't see that he was the first one to park here. The young man did not believe that he dared to argue with him at all. So he asked the old man if he knew who his father was. She, however, not wanting to see these arguments, decided to befriend them. The man apologized because he was too impulsive. The guy replied that it was his fault and it was not nice of him to take advantage of his position. Yuan, Yuan asked if this was Daji's power. Fox replied that this was the girl's power. She asked to be allowed to take control of her body for a while and be shown what it meant to be alive. She took off her blouse. Everyone immediately began to stare at her. The woman asked the man who he was staring at. Wen Yun was surprised that her soul was soaring. Daji told the others not to hide their inner selves and fall in love with her. Let them enjoy the girl as much as they want. Wen Yuan noticed some silhouettes where a man said that he wanted this beauty. The other man, on the other hand, failed to win a single game last night. Tonight, he'll get his nephew to help him raise the ratings. The boy complimented the woman. But it was as if his soul was telling this old woman to leave already. Yuan Yuan asked if seeing through people's mood swings was also her ability. The fox replied that it was not an ability. When you raise your soul level to its maximum, you become sensitive to the emotions and obsessions of those around you. There is nothing good about it, as most of the thoughts are just awful. People are surrounded by these throughout the day, and after a while they become oversaturated and emotionless. In this state, she will try to please someone, even beg for those emotions that can give them some pleasure. But in terms of Yuan Yuan, she asked whether she found this life beautiful or vile, but she is free to determine her own life. She saw the emotions of the girl and the man in which the girl asked not to touch her. The man, on the other hand, asked if the girl was waiting for someone and asked to be allowed to touch her a little. Wen Yuan wanted to break something. His arm was really broken now. He must repent and confess his true intentions. He, on the other hand, grabbed onto the girl and asked how he could even do such a thing and apologized. This world is only happy because of their existence. Daji asked if this is considered the limit of luxury in the current times. Of course. 
There are many expensive and beautiful things, and they all belong to her. Yen Yuan wanted to stop her, after all, it is very expensive here. The girl came in here to buy everything. Wen Wen said it was expensive. The consultant replied that the items were out of stock. Da Zi asked how not, when there are plenty of them on display. Does she really think she doesn't have enough money? The consultant pointed out that this is a limited edition collection of handbags, and it's not here for sale. There are many unspoken rules about luxury goods. If she wanted to buy their bag, she had to get in line. She didn't realize what the queue was. The counselor thought it was another kept woman of one of the local rich. She would never understand them. Dadzi asked if she didn't like her. The counselor responded that she could not help with that in any way. Dadzi wished she had been even more polite. The store employee immediately dropped to her knees and said that she would now pack everything for the honored customer. Two girls with not the best characters merged into one. He will hope nothing bad happens to them. Yuanzi replied that Da Zi was ranked among the great martyrs. She had long ago learned to restrain herself, but the boy wondered if the old man was so sure of that. The girl was telling everyone to pack everything in sight. Suddenly the girl was pushed out and began to fall. She used a tailwind, and after that the flow. This woman was now all right. Daji said to Neil. The woman was thankful for the rescue. The boy asked if there were such obedient gods in the world. Yuanzi replied that it is not a god, but the power of Daji. When the soul reaches its limit, a single glance is enough to use the most gruesome technique. Yen Yen noticed the protagonist and waved at him. Daji asked if she liked this guy. Yuan Yuan asked if it was so obvious. Falling in love is the most beautiful feeling in the world, so there is no need to be ashamed of it. They can create an incredible love story. Three men stood in front of her and demanded money from her for everything she had bought. She told the kid to pay for it all. Chin Cheng asked why on earth he should do that. Isn't that his duty as her master? He is not comfortable with such an inference. Yuan Yuan asked him not to say such embarrassing things and return her body, but he refused to pay. Well, the truth is, he didn't do it for long. After that, he paid for everything. He woke up immediately and didn't realize what had just happened. The guy asked if she had used magic on him. After materialization, the soul synchronizes with the cultivation level of the host. It turns out against her technique, he has no defense at all. The girl asked how he could say such a thing. It was a little prank. Yuanzi said, Chen Yuan 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 has crossed the line. The guy separated the soul. Da Ji asked what he was doing. Chin Cheng said that it was as a punishment. Future imprisoned in the Hall of Souls. She cannot use her body and is left to rely solely on his wishes. The girl seems to have gotten it all wrong about his intentions. Turns out that's what he's into. Even more so in public. Yuan Yuan asked why he was so enthusiastic. But she didn't even realize what she had to do now, because she was completely powerless. There was no alternative but to accept the offer. The girl replied that one cannot get true pleasure through violence. The protagonist, of course, knew that their heads were not in order. But he did not think so. The old man explained that there was a legend that Da Ji had suffered from hobbies as a child. But that was within reason. It seems she needs to be brought down to earth a bit. The protagonist decided to put her soul back into her body. The girl asked if he wasn't going to continue. It was only then that she noticed that control of her body had returned. Da Ji explained that she only wanted to please the world with her beauty and enjoy the emotions of those around her. Gwen Yen wondered why she didn't use her power to pay the bill. The vixen remarked that in order to enjoy herself you have to spend money. The protagonist replied that she should spend her money. UNZ was surprised that Yuan Yuan really does write everything down. A girl was walking at night and called back to her mother, after which she explained that she felt like someone was following her. She turned around, but no one was there. The girl thought it was too suspicious, but suddenly someone appeared from behind her and pressed his hand over her mouth. She had heard talk that the Xuan Yuan sword was a demon killer, and it could dispel the cursed blood. If the body turns into a zombie after the blood is injected into her, then she's not the one they're looking for. She just needs to be killed. The girl woke up. She started turning into a zombie. Looks like the resurrection went perfectly, and one could finally calm down. Yuanzi thought that the guy would be angry, but then he remembered that he and Chen Ning had agreed to go to the evening infamy. And then the guy realized that he was too late. The girl would definitely kill him. Yuanzi provided him with an expensive bag that he could take to the girl as an apology. The boy thanked the old men. Yuanzi replied that he was no older than the protagonist, and asked him not to call him that again. Yuan Yun asked if she had made Chin Chin pay on purpose. The fox replied that what could be better than a gift from a loved one? He's really so thoughtful. Suddenly the girl saw all the things the fox had seen before. There she lay dead, 
and in Da Ji's arms was a Jin Cheng. After which, Da Ji who was holding Qin Cheng turned her attention to Yuan Yuan. She didn't realize what was going on at all. Da Ji had told her not to give in to the illusion. No matter how real it is, the girl must hold on. If she believes it for even a moment, she'll be completely mired in it. The divine greatest form of spiritual beginning and end. One is the demon formation and the other is the mystical Zhudian formation, the three most famous ancient formations. One speck of dust is the smallest particle of the stream of consciousness. One particle is one world. If one immerses oneself in it, one's consciousness will forever wander in an infinite world, sinking deeper and deeper without the possibility of returning back. She doesn't know why these formations to her originated here, but they are not something that Zhang Qingcheng can't talk about. The girl inquired as to why she could not do so. Daji herself said that the guy is in control of her soul now, and she can't disobey his instructions. She thinks he has more important things on his mind right now. First, they have to find out the cause of the formation. And then they'll see. Suddenly, two people appeared in front of her. The female was the head of the Gongsun family, who was at the fifth cultivation level, and the strength value was 400. The man was the head of the Z family, who was at the second cultivation level, and the strength value was 200. The woman said that any academy student from the age of 18 with an innate aura could be a Xuan Yuan sword contract. They'll only know it after they try it. Yan Yuan found out about the heads of Gong Sun and Si. She saw them in the report. She wondered why such powerful people needed an unremarkable girl. The man replied that they were only the young lord's sixes. If she obediently went with them, she would have less to lose. These two would be stronger than Gao Wen Qian. Dazi asked for body control, but she refused. Yuan Yuan had a fourth level cultivation and strength values of 400. The materialized soul had the same stats as the host. Memories of the guy saying he hated people who bullied the weak but feared the strong flashed through her mind. She would try her best to get him to stop hating her. The woman realized that she was the only one who could handle her. The girl heard them talking to her just now about the Zhuan Yuan sword contract. It's such a coincidence that the guy she likes is also interested in it. So Yuan Yuan wondered if they would tell her everything themselves or if she would have to make them do it. The man could no longer tolerate the insolence of this juvenile, but Yuan Yuan forced him to his knees, and then she lifted it up and lowered him to the ground. She will be content to see this exciting show 100 more times, but there was something tying her together here. Other than Master, this is the first time the head of the Gongsun family has seen such a strong disciple. Too bad it's over. But it's also the aunt who should tie herself up. She may be old, but she's so perverted. And after saying that, it was Auntie who was really tied up. No magic circles or shouting with such a complex illusion technique. They didn't understand how she had managed to pull it all off. They're trying to figure out such an elementary technique. Now these two have to say everything they know. A little while later they lay unconscious. Li Tian is really just a sick bastard. Therefore she should immediately tell everything to Qin Cheng. In recent days, several girls have died in Tianchuan. Yuro is currently investigating, so everyone should be more vigilant. The guy wondered why she had dragged him out in the middle of the night. The girl replied that she was worried about him. After the battle with the Zhao family, he didn't look like himself at all. For a few days he has been sitting in his apartment, not even showing up at the university, and also constantly talking on the phone with some girl. The protagonist apologized for making her worry. The demon invasion is getting closer and closer. He had already reached the fourth level of cultivation, and could even compete with many from the city. But he was unlikely to match up with the demon. Chen Ning inquired if she was his girlfriend. Qin Chen replied that the situation is a bit serious and besides, she knows it too. The guy didn't even understand how he should explain the fact that Yuan Yuan had been resurrected and also became a part of him for the goodies. The girl asked to look at her and asked if she noticed anything unusual. The guy replied that she had reached the ninth level. Chen Ning replied that he was a fool. Her abilities drive a guy crazy. The emperor would probably be thrilled too. She replied that it was all thanks to his exercise and vitamins. Except that those exercises always gave her some inexplicable familiar feeling. There was clearly something wrong with her cultivation speed. Yuanzi asked, Who would have thought? He felt as if she had a predisposition to these techniques from birth. It can't be that she is the reincarnation of Hong Yun. Yuanzi started joking about the guy being the heir of the Lord of Men, Yuan Yuan being the reincarnation of Da Ji, and Chen Ning being Hong Yun. Could it be that their group had all the great men in them? He would also say that Liu Jiming's people were the reincarnation of the demon progenitor. Then there would definitely be a complete set of Pangu bloodline. 
the guy decided to explain again. The guy asked if having a Xuan Yuan in the past had been converted into a demon killing weapon. The old man explained that it wasn't just a Wan Yuan sword or a demon killer sword. It is a blade tempered by the great spirit of the clan of gods that Hong Yun herself took the life of. A guy shouldn't belittle her merit. That old man is definitely not a curable bore. Chin Chung asked if he really has something against his wife. Yuan Zi asked, Does this guy really think everyone is a pervert like himself? He and Hong Yun are purebred brother and sister. The guy seemed to understand what the old man meant. Yuan Tzu guessed that the guy had tricked him. He didn't understand how it was that Hong Yun's reincarnation was suddenly his sister. He was mentally prepared for a lot of things, but this was still a bit much. Yuan Zi apologized. After all, this was all something that should have been told to him earlier. Chin Chung understood that the old man didn't want to hide it. Everything happened subconsciously. That day, he saw the old man's memories in his dream. How he knew about the Hall of Souls, the sword, and the secret of Hong Yun. All these things Hong Yun had passed on to mankind. The secret of the Hong Dun is carefully guarded by the Third Emperor and passed down from generation to generation. The Hall of Souls is now in his hands, but it was unclear where the Purple Blood Sword was at the moment. Suddenly they noticed someone. Looks like they were spotted after all. The rest of you can come out too. Lao Lu, who had a cultivation level 5 and a strength value of 500, said that he didn't even know that they had a connoisseur here. Had he known how many girls this man had caught in the past few days, but they were the only ones who smelled his presence. Also beside him was Lao Zhao, who was at the first level of cultivation, and his strength value was 150. There's been news of girls disappearing all over town. Looks like they're responsible. Lao Zhao wants to take the girl for himself and leave the guy for Lao Liu. Lao Liu would quickly chop off his head and that would be the end of it. These guys aren't as weak as they seem. The girl decides to take on the former and he doesn't have to protect her every time. Lao Zhao didn't know when such a master had appeared in Tian Chuan, but Lao Lu replied that there was nothing to be afraid of some schoolboy. Even though this person might be five times stronger than Wang Qian, but that's not enough. But the girl was already attacked by Lao Zhao, but she managed to masterfully dodge him, after which she used the daze technique, shrouding clouds. She could barely handle him. The girl asked the guy what to do with them now, whether they should hand them over to the bureau. The boy decided to ask them something first. The technique he used is the calling card of the Liu family. Therefore, the protagonist assumed that his real name was Liu Dai Sun. Does he really mean to tell you that this man is the chairman of the Liu company? Qin Cheng inquired as to what purpose they were stealing girls for. He didn't think it would come to this. So he decided to perform one action for the sake of a common great cause. He began to turn into a demon corpse. They just didn't understand why there was a demon corpse here in the first place. It was also five times stronger than Gao Wenqian. He wanted to attack the protagonist, but the guy was not confused and summoned the sword assassin Moi. After which, he pierced that monster. When the monster hit, it pronounced that the demon's blood was the nectar of immortality. As far as the protagonist knows, there is only one person in town who has the cursed blood and is able to give orders to the heads of families. It's that young master Li Tianyi. Qin Qin asked if this young master had ordered to capture young girls and where they were now and also what he was going to do with them here. But this monster called the kid a sinner who prevented the Lord from saving humanity. Whereupon he replied that they were all sinners. It was amazing that the cursed blood had turned against its owner. They won't be wasting their time. This fixation technique is one of the oldest divine techniques. He doesn't have the slightest chance of drinking the cursed blood. He doesn't know how Li Tian made them all believe him. The man should have seen for himself that demon blood does not grant immortality. Drinking it is like committing suicide. If the family forces a man to do so, he must tell them what their purpose is. In return, the protagonist will ensure his safety. But this person didn't even think, what do you tell them? The kid realized he was about to explode, so he told the girl to back off. His last words were for them to underestimate their resolve, whereupon it exploded. After all, the guy didn't understand what motivated the heads of powerful families not to fear death at all. Chen Yu and Yu and Yuan called back to him. She told me that Li Tian and the Wu clan are in league with the Wu clan. They kidnap girls and wrap them in corpses to find the sword Xuan Yuan in this way. Chen Ning noticed a ball of poison near the corpse that was bitten by the second person. The guy yelled for her to stay away from that place. But it was too late and the balloon burst. Damn blood got on her arm. Chin Cheng shouted for her to remain calm, and he was now using the power of chaos to absorb the poison. But the girl was already starting to turn zombie. Chin Cheng and Yuan Zi became the seers of how Hong Yun appeared, as well as the sword Xuan Yuan. She swung her sword. 
After which the cursed blood was dispersed. The protagonist didn't understand what had just happened and why the curse was instantly dispelled. Yuenzi replied that it was the true power of the purple blood ball. He immediately ran up to the girl. The man informed Mr. Li that the life talismans of Lao Liu and Lao Zhao had broken. If a life talisman breaks, it means the person is dead, so they lost. Others wondered if there was someone in Tian Chuan who was capable of killing these two. Perhaps it was the Bureau. Tianan began to reassure his loyal comrades. For the sake of all mankind, he would not let this go so easily. But suddenly, the man noticed that these people had not lost. Their cursed blood had been touched by Zhuan Yuan's sword. They finally found that sword. Everyone was overjoyed because they'd found him. At last, there was hope for the salvation of mankind. Tianan explained that no one is allowed to act rashly. They must not spread this information, especially to his father. There is only one chance, so a careful plan of action must be developed. You can't let the Wu clan see anything. Meanwhile, Sui Shen noticed that Chen Yuan Yuan was definitely dead. Therefore, she wondered what kind of method Qin Cheng had used. In fact, Chen Ning is not actually the owner of the sword. Li's family has also gone mad and is completely desperate. Even she has no idea what to do next. The girl noticed that the main character was looking at her. The guy, however, replied that he wasn't looking at her. It was on the news again that many young girls had gone missing in the city over the past few days. An investigation is underway, so they should watch their own safety. Ziming asked his boss if he was free after school. The guy reminded him for the mission. If he wanted to become a permanent student of Xiangke, in addition to the registration fee, he needed to earn at least 10 credits in three months by completing various tasks. It turns out he never got any credits since he got in. Well, he didn't have time to think about it now. The girl noticed that they received as much as 100 credits for the mission. It looked like it was an A-level mission. The boss had wiped out an entire family. Then what was an A-level mission for him? Recently, young girls have been going missing. Even from their school, three have gone missing. The Bureau is freaking out over what is happening and offers a big reward for catching this pervert. They decided to accept this mission. There's no evidence yet, but she has a plan to catch the culprit. The guy had told her to stay out of it, hadn't he? But she was just thinking about those missing girls. She couldn't live with a clear conscience if she didn't get to the bottom of this case. But right now, nothing is more important than her own safety. She was the perpetrator's real target from the start. If Chin Chung doesn't want to help, she'll do it herself. Does he really think she's that stupid? The guy has been gathering a lot of information these days, because he probably wants to solve this case himself. He always thinks he has to protect her. Chin Cheng always talks about her as a burden and always prefers to decide for himself. But she wants to do something for himself too. After school, the forest outside the school grounds. And is this really her master plan? Li Shi Yelp asked Liu Jiming if he was sure that this plan would definitely work. Chen Ning asked how he even guessed to use the Shido as bait. He did some research. Several girls from their school have gone missing, which means the culprit is looking for beautiful single girls. Shido is so beautiful and the clothes on her are awesome. This pervert will definitely not be able to pass by. The protagonist realized his mistake when he trusted his friend's IQ. Yuan Yuan replied that only a fool would fall for this foolish plan, and she wasn't called here at all. Yuan Yuan was just afraid that because of Ziming, Qin Cheng would be in danger. She asked the protagonist to protect her if someone came here. Chen Ning asked where the protagonist was stretching his hands. The guy on the other hand replied that it was all her. This asshole's taking it out on the girl. Yen Yuan asked, he knows who the culprit is, but why did he join them anyway? Chin Chen replied that if they stayed, they would definitely see something interesting. Suddenly the guy told everyone to shut up because there's someone out there. I can't believe someone actually fell for that. She began to shake with fear, for she thought it was really a murderer. This man seemed happy to see this girl, but the man just opened his cloak so she could see his naked body. She immediately screamed in embarrassment and called the man a pervert. The others also cried out at this. She started to run but suddenly fell. The kid picked her up. This pervert realized it was an ambush. Ji Ming told the boss to catch up with this pervert before he ran away. As long as Chin Cheng is here, that is to say, he definitely won't be able to escape. The disciplinary committee has been patrolling there for days now. But not a single suspicious person has been seen. That's because the president intervened personally. So the killer is hiding. Shu Di Yi screamed for them to catch the pervert sooner rather than later. The guy, however, replied that he was here today and there was definitely no way to escape. Zhang Yu Yu replied that she definitely did not expect Qin Cheng to do such a thing. She called the protagonist an animal and kicked him in the face. The guy asked if she had completely lost her mind. Zhang Yu Yu replied that she was fine now. 
Shi Yuan remarked that she hit the wrong person. The real culprit is trying to avoid. She didn't expect to do anything wrong. The guy drove her off the road. But Yuan Yuan had already caught it. In her mind, she thought of having Qin Chen praise her. The girl apologized. She just didn't expect it. The guy replied that there were many things she didn't expect. All the actors are here this time. But the weird thing is, this guy is under a spell. Gen Yen decided to set him free. The man woke up and saw the king of the newcomers as well as the president. But she lifted him up and told him not to try to avoid responsibility. He has to say what just happened. He can't remember it. He was coming back from class last night and was attacked. He felt a sharp pain in his head and lost consciousness. She realized it was a trap. Chen Ning and Ji Ming were surrounded by three people. Two people were with first level soul purification. And one person with a level two soul purification. This is the girl that the Lord wants. They must capture her and bring her back to master. The guy asked what they wanted. And they don't even know who she is. She is the girlfriend of Qin Cheng, who has been proclaimed the king of the newcomers of this school. They immediately recognized the name of the kid who wiped out the Zhao family. But now there's three of them. She also found out that I became the head of three families that cultivate immortality, namely Zhou Wang and Wu. Last time it was Lu De Sun, and now it's them. Now it's up to them to get into action. She tried to mentally reassure herself that everything was going according to Mr. Cheng's plan. She just had to play her part. If they catch these people, they will know the truth. They noticed that this girl had the first level of soul purification. But it's not just a purification of the soul. This girl's technique is kind of weird. They noticed that Chen Ning was fighting with someone. A guy came running over to them and explained that she fights strong people in the soul purification stage. Zhang Yuyu immediately asked where Chen Ning was. He replied that the girl had defeated them independently one by one. They turned to flee and she ran after them. She must have been tricked and that was part of their plan. They're trying to trap her. He turned to Yuan Yuan and asked if she could sense where Chen Ning was now. How good it was that the guy let him take Yuan Yuan the trace of her soul. From the fact that they were using the tracking technique, she realized they were prepared for this. The position is discovered, so they can find it at any time. The guy now said that he would explain everything on the way. Jimin yelled why are they abandoning him again? Or maybe he too is scared of being kidnapped by a pervert. They finally found them. She would try to follow Chen Ning's idea. In the early stage of soul purification, it is quite possible to deal with them. But the guy replied that she should stay out of the enemy's way, keep her distance, and keep up. She didn't understand a thing. These guys have been so mysterious lately. It seems like they're hiding something from the president. But it's all about these kidnappings. He had originally planned to handle the case on his own, but Ji Ming's stupidity inadvertently led them to the real culprits. First the pervert, then this trio. Isn't that a bit much for a mere coincidence? He began to speculate what she meant. She also recalled the main character's words about not trusting anyone. Since they need Chen Ning, they just need to let them have it. They will move them to their lair on their own. And then, they will catch them all. Zhang Yu Yu cried out that they had put the girl in danger by letting her be the bait. Qin Cheng swept her eyes over the fact that she didn't need their constant protection. They're much more careful than they thought. He asked to examine the crime scenes, and the results were expected. The footprints that were left at the crime scene belonged to the Tianchuan refining families. They are all masters at the soul refining stage and above. But there was no one from the Li family among the footprints. If the Xuanyuan sword doesn't appear, then this family won't appear in person either. They will not directly participate, but will secretly control everything. That way, if something went wrong, they would simply be left out and continue to serve the Wu clan. In turn, they can take advantage of it. Without the help of the Wu clan and the Li family, fearing the families under the leadership of Li Tian is not worth it. They're in place. Yuan Yuan felt a huge amount of strongest energy. In addition to the heads of families, Li Tianyi is probably here as well. He asked the girls if everyone was ready. They had a tough battle ahead of them. Are all the rookies this year really that strong? No matter how strong she is, even if she had wings, there's no way to escape. They reported that they had completed the master's errand and Chen Ning at their place. The girl landed. Li Tianyi came out to them and congratulated them on accomplishing a great achievement. They were the ones who had helped it happen. When he stands up as the sacred emperor and expels the demon clan, they, the heroes of humanity, will go down in history. A horrible sight opened before her eyes. She didn't realize what it was at all. She need not worry, for she will be next. She approached the girl and asked what was wrong with her. She told her to run away from here. These people are really crazy. But Chen Ning was determined to save her. Everything will be alright. But it was too late. But tears came to her eyes. 
Tien, and replied that she didn't need to worry. He was different from these lower class members. As the reincarnation of Immortal Lord Hong Yun, she would be the perfect victim to awaken the Xuan Yuan sword. Her body will be sacrificed to the sword, like her predecessor who gave the Emperor the power of a divine sword to slay demons. She will become a goddess praised for centuries. She doesn't know what this guy is talking about, and she's not going to become any kind of victim. She must stop these madmen. Tian and asked if she really thought of stopping them alone. The girl replied that it wasn't like that. There was an explosion. They and everyone together will stop them right now. He definitely didn't expect to see Zhang Qinchen and Zhang Yu here. Yen Yuan turned her attention to herself and asked if she was invisible. He turned to the guys who had brought the girl here and asked if they had betrayed him. They replied that they didn't know they were being followed. On behalf of the disciplinary committee, she will hold him accountable. But the protagonist decided to do it on his own. Tian, and was his only childhood friend. That's the reason he has to put an end to everything. She'll take care of the rest. She used the art of illusion, the ghost seal. From now on, none of them are getting out of here. If it wasn't for this Zhang Qingcheng, he wouldn't have taken the path of perfection. And the secrets of the Li family would never have been revealed. If it wasn't for the guy, he would still have a happy family, and his mother wouldn't have died so suddenly. There was a warning on the phone that a strong group had been detected nearby. A level 9 horror whose combat strength is 900. Li pulls and hides his strength. He is at the ninth level of soul purification. Yuanzi offered to use their shared soul to raise his level to the ninth level. But he wants to end it himself. Today, Qin Cheng turned against him. He prevented him from taking revenge on the demon clan and the father of Tian Yi. The protagonist didn't understand what he was saying. What could he possibly know? This is more than simple revenge. He will be the savior of this world. Only with his sword can he kill his father. And only with it can he destroy the demon clan. Only then can they save the future of this country. So it turns out he's saving the future of the country. These assholes probably only want to be lifeguards for a couple of chicks. They're sacrificing the future of humanity. Qin Cheng can't listen to him talk about killing people in the name of saving humanity. Mankind doesn't need such a beast as a savior. Tian and also attacked him with the intention of killing him. There was a massive explosion. They were able to protect themselves with a shield. Was the shockwave really that strong? Those two are definitely the real monsters. These two are definitely close to breaking through to the next stage. Others, however, were determined not to let these wenches get away. Zhang Yuyu said Chen Ning stand behind her. After all, she will protect her. Yuan Yuan asked if she had decided to compete in usefulness for Qin Chen. Chen Ning replied that she was not as strong as them. But eight or nine people she'll definitely take on. They decided to attack them, but most of them have been dealt with. Tian Chuan's family heads are just trash. They have to use a defense spell. They also need to combine their powers into one. You can't beat these girls that easily. They shouldn't even think about it. They are known throughout the city and can afford to have a little fun after them. Being in the soul purification stage, more than half a century can easily handle these girls. They'll just wait until they run out of mana and sacrifice them. Chen Ning asked what they should do now. Yuan Yuan asked if they played in the Royal League. It's a team game, attack from the rear. With simple defense spells, the ghost soul technique couldn't stop them. The others didn't understand why on earth they were attacking their own. It's definitely all demon tricks. That girl is controlling them. They too can make an attack from the rear. Those men already wanted to attack Yuan Yuan. But the two girls stood up to defend her. With their attack, they dealt with a couple more people. Yu Yu asked how much better she was than Zhang Qincheng. But Chen Ning only thought about where he was now and what was wrong with him. The guy used the great power of Yang. All those nasty people can do is run away. As a descendant of a great family, even on the brink of life and death, he will show his strength. These four types of energy control the sword Saolan. The Li family wields the technique of severe frost. The Wu family is flame and the Xiao family is deafening thunder. Thunder and flames were directed at him, but the guy handled it with ease. After which he used the power of the spirit, perception. He wondered if he could master the direction of the sword attack with the five winds technique. He summoned my sword again. After which, he easily repelled the attacks that were aimed in his direction. Tien and jumped behind him, yelling for him to look this way. Fortunately, the protagonist had time to use teleportation. A kid appeared behind him and asked where he was looking. Tien and didn't understand if it was possible to use this method twice in a row. Without saving up for the power of a shared soul, he managed to pull it off two times in a row. He is like a Sun Wukong with his magic cloud. Normally, such a technique would only slightly shorten the distance and could not be used twice. Yuanzi was personally involved in training him. She has put up with this elder Yuanzi for a long time. Does the old man really think he's that tough? 
Yuan Yuan heard her sister talking about it. This kind of distance compression is an ancient magic power. It is different from ordinary magic. It is a creation that is governed by the power of the three great laws. Inanimate objects can be easily manipulated. The vixen noticed her distraction technique. You can use the power of your soul to pre-record the spells you want on any medium and activate the spell at any time. A few days ago, he had pestered the fox to teach him how to do it. Now I see what it was for. Back then, at the moment of their first fight, the leaves were burning due to the pre-recorded spells. Li Tianyi, as the target, had two spells cast on him. His skills aren't particularly interesting, but his combat power is one of the strongest he's seen. Two swords will merge into one. The energy of the sword is yin and yang. He already wanted to deal with this pull and pull once and for all. But that wasn't the end of it. Zhang Qinchen is really the best. He was wearing high-quality armor after all. He had completely forgotten that the Li family was a weapons manufacturer. He used his 500 battle property to suppress the 900 battle power of the Tian Yi. And his sword had practically destroyed his family's best weapon. But he wouldn't give the protagonist even a chance to get close to him again. He dispelled the very petal that was attached to him. Well, he doesn't need to because he lost. Shrouding the flow of time, the most powerful wind elemental spell taught in school. This was the spell that Tian had just used to control the direction of the sword energy. And is the young gentleman not the only one who practiced this technique? It's the same unity of the four methods. They need to leave, because this guy's gonna drop a real bomb. You didn't have to say that. The others also began to flee. The wind element is filled with the purest energy of wood. Filled with fire flow. And finally, together with the magical power of metal, it easily turns into a bomb. This is his own author's technique. The power of the unity of the four methods is incredible. But also, don't forget that the purity of Zhang Qingchen's magical power surpasses the others. This strike would probably wipe out anyone below the Divine Perfection stage. They began to worry about Mr. Li. Li tugged and finally revealed his main trump card. This Qin Cheng made him show the cursed blood of his body. Unlike the cannon fodder, Gao Wenqian, with the help of the Wu clan, did he manage to curb the power of the cursed blood. Li pulled and became a demon. Tianan noticed the way people were shouting about the master showing his strength. Qin Cheng doesn't even know what it cost to save humanity. He didn't understand why this guy was determined to destroy all his hard work. Its form is far more perfect than Gao Wenqian and the others. It seems to have the strength of a demon. Now, even if the four great masters come together, they will not be worthy opponents for him. In such a case, you must use the Dragon Disaster Technique and the Forbidden Thunder Technique. The guy shouted, reminding himself that this battle was between him and Li Tianyi. He had flashbacks of the young lord of the Li family attacking his father. In the end, he was killed by the head of the Li family himself. The details of the incident are being investigated. Suddenly there was a lot of lightning. The students didn't understand what those sounds were or what was going on. It was the very moment they were attacked by the demon. It turns out that things had gone differently. In a previous life, Tian Yi betrayed the Wu clan and was killed while attacking Li Tian Yuan. And since the demon clan had been exposed, he was forced to appear in person and find Chen Ning. It turns out that the demon clan's attack can be avoided. To do this, you need to stop the pull and right now. The boy advised him to stop, for his plan was doomed to failure from the start. He can join them to eradicate the Wu clan. Tian and will be able to use this achievement to ask for a pardon, and this is his only chance to survive. He's been forced to obey the Wu clan for 10 years. Now he's finally found a power that surpasses theirs. He even found the sword contract. He will destroy his father and make the demon clan show themselves and then join all his forces with the others to destroy them. In this way, he will become a hero. And then he'll kill Chin Cheng and nullify all the evidence. Everything will go according to his plan. Talking to him must be completely useless. In that case, let their power decide what is right and wrong. Someone was already heading towards them. Xi Ying, who was the deputy director of the Immortal Criminal Bureau, was there. He was at the ninth level of soul refinement. Xi'an had never seen anything like this before. The first extraction team should go on high alert. They should arrive on the scene as soon as possible. They also noticed that someone had decided to interfere in their battle. This is where the Bureau came in after all. The man realized that he was indeed a demon. Deputy Sai is the strongest person in this city. He is only slightly inferior to the four great masters. Now they have a chance to win. He noticed Chin Chen there and told him to get out of here because a student can't handle this guy. Deputy Z shouldn't be so impulsive and get out of here quickly. He should report this to his superiors as soon as possible. Now the youngsters are underestimating him. He ordered the group to get ready. Tianyi advises to listen to Qin Chen and get out of here immediately. 
They are an elite group and masters above the fifth level of soul refinement, having gone through more than one battle together. The guy was yelling at these idiots to do nothing. Tien and only snapped his fingers and dealt with one person like that. And after that with one more person. These two were called Lao San and Lao Wu. Qin Qin appeared in front of him. He advised that the man ordered his men to stand down. Don't they even realize that? But the rest of the team didn't listen and decided to make a joint attack with the five of them. How tired he was of those bugs getting tangled up under his feet. In those black lightning bolts lies the power of the witch, the ultimate embodiment of the one consumed by the cursed blood. The state of Lai pulls and is terrifying. Tien and dealt with the other people who attacked him. After this move interacts with the witch's power, he will actually be able to use mana as a guide. But the man didn't want to wait any longer and pushed the guy away to get out of his way. He will kill that damned monster or else all who died did so for nothing. Tian and help him, since he himself had already chosen the path of destruction. His armor, comparable in effectiveness to Li Jia Zheng's defense. He thought the lightning bolts of cursed blood wouldn't hurt him. It's a good thing the protagonist made it in time. The man didn't understand how he could even lose. Yuan Yuan explained that there was a reason why Qin Cheng was stopping him. In the face of a witch, ordinary monks and bugs are not worth it. She hoped her left hand would make him remember that. His arm was really torn off. He should stop yelling and be grateful to Qin Cheng. As an ordinary man, he wants to fight the embodiment of the witch's power. Tian and is truly pathetic. He still has the nerve to say things like that. The pawns have been dealt with, so they will continue. One physical strength is comparable to that of four great masters. The guy was using a true chaos body. After that, he was able to block the pull and pull attack. The man didn't expect that he could actually block it. He finally realized the hereditary power of humanity. He abandons the dignity of the human race to pursue the interests of the enemy, purely because the rest of the world finds it demeaning to belong to the human race, which is in many ways inferior to the immortal clan and the witch clan. However, he doesn't know that the spirit of humanity has been the best since ancient times, and the power inherited by the emperors throughout history, comparable to the witch ancestor's power, is not inferior in the slightest. He still thinks that the legendary rulers were elevated to sainthood early on. There is probably not a single person in this world who has inherited their power. Also pulling and didn't understand how he was blocking those lightning bolts. The guy used a force of nature. He stopped the attack of pulling and... Couldn't those damn lightning bolts be able to pierce the sphere? Once upon a time there was an ordinary boy. In pursuit of a crazy idea to save humanity and banish witches. He accidentally summoned the spirit of the deceased emperor Xuan Yuan. The spirit didn't look down on the boy but entrusted him with his own power, making him responsible for the future of humanity, thus awakening the true embodiment of chaos. Thus, stifled by resentment, lacking ambition, the young man made a decision that day. Contrary to the hundreds of reincarnations up to the final death of the soul, one cannot afford to let down the Togo spirit of the hero. It turns out he has a fraction of the power that is only rumored. After repeated skirmishes, this body finally adapted to Hongdong's incarnation. But such a thing is impossible, and he's probably just lying. Li Tian is the only hope of mankind, and the Emperor's inheritance has long been lost. One punch will determine the outcome. He better use all his power, or he won't get another chance. Most of all about this guy, he doesn't like his own smug face. Does he think he's the only one surrounded by divine power? Tian, too. Supernatural comprehension is superior to normal magic, especially when combined with the power of the law. They'll review how a guy can stop the power of thunder combined with demon blood. Chen Ning wanted to help him, but she was stopped. This is not the level at which to interfere. The girl has to look at the weapon in his hands. The merging of the soul of the deceased with a direct descendant of the deceased. Great Yang Limit, Sword of Ganjiang. The Great Yin Limit, the sword is mine. A fusion of yin and yang, the paired sword. He began to chop up these ball-pulling attack and he was blinded by a flash. After that, the guy started to come around. Xiezo Won. This kid combined the power of two blades, a power that even Hong Yun couldn't control perfectly, but this kid could. Teen and lost, and now those matters of life and death must be resolved. The loser must forfeit his life. He lost, but he doesn't think he's wrong. They really won't be able to determine what is truly right and wrong. If it wasn't for Chin Cheng, he would have wiped out the demons long ago, but pulling and should not shift the responsibility to someone else. It's over, but there's only one step left. He'll never give up. But the guy's point is that it's not over yet. I mean, he said this plan was doomed to fail from the start. Li Tian Yuan has been making Tian Yuan look like a fool all this time. Tian didn't realize what he meant. New adversaries have appeared on the scene. Tian and failed him very badly. For the sake of those lowlifes, his mother's followers, 
he betrayed the supreme demon god. Li Tianyuan arrived, as well as all the masters of the Li family. The combat power is 1,500. Tianyuan is incredibly strong during reincarnation. In the city, his family is the number one in terms of strength. There are over a dozen level 9 masters alone. Tian Yi asked father why he came here. Qin Cheng wondered if he still didn't understand. Li Tianyuan had long ago figured out their plan. To me directly, but just to find out about the Xuan Yuan sword. It turns out, from the beginning, he was just a bouncing and clowning around. Tian Yuan asked if the guy had already figured out his plan long ago. So why was there a need to fight with Tian Yi? The protagonist asked, what if that's what he originally wanted to replace this man here? It's all very funny, but is the kid worth it? Typical post-transformation attack. A new threat loomed over them. Upon awakening, he will be able to experience the fullness of nature. The body would become half-immortal and eternally young. From that point on, a man could be considered a true immortal cultivator. Even though there is a small gap between the ninth level and the divine stage, there is still an unbridgeable gap. One person with cursed blood is enough to take the souls of a hundred level nine masters. The pressure is so intense, he can't even move. The children's jokes have come to an end. Humanity is doomed. The only way for her to survive is to follow him into the demon clan. The girl asked if she would go with him. He would let these people go. The order of the oldest spirit of the clan is to return the girl to him safely. Next, he himself will personally bring the deadly weapon of primordial chaos out of its unbroken slumber. It makes no difference whether the others die or stay alive. She wanted to save them somehow, but the guy wouldn't even let her leave. The doom of all mankind cannot be avoided. Giving your soul to the demon god is the only way to save the human race. He may not be as good as Li Tianyi or his father, but being an ordinary mortal, he often asks himself how he earned such a treasure. If there had been a Chan in his place and maybe he would have done much better. However, he now realizes that Qin Cheng is much better than the so-called heroes. He can dare many things but bow to these invaders who are killing his people never. People don't change. This guy's mana is running low and he's dying. There's no one left who can fight him. All his friends will die here because of his idle chatter. But the guy replied that the only one who will die here is this man. But his friends are also not to be underestimated. It turns out that the protagonist specifically insisted on fighting Tian and alone to save his strength. The boy asked the daughter of the head of Qian Lun what her chances of winning were. Her chances of winning are 50-50. They did not expect that Zheng Yu Yu was the daughter of the powerful head of the Qian Lun Pavilion. If you count the dead people of the Lai family who are capable of turning into demons at any moment, there is no chance of victory. A ninth level skill girl thinks she can defeat him in an even fight. Yan Yuan decided to take on a bunch of dead people. Chen Ning also wanted to participate in the battle. But Chen Ning and Yuan Yuan should not fight. And He Yuan, on the contrary, should help the guy protect Chen Ning. Since Tian Yuan is here, the demons ready to watch his back are most likely somewhere nearby. They can't afford to let him take advantage of their weakness. Daji something doubted that if they fought, they would have any chance of winning. Of course, Professor Zhue had already taken care of everything. Participating in the battle last time, she had made it clear to the demon clan that regardless of the severity of the voodoo poisoning, she would be able to sacrifice herself before she died from the poison. So the Dems wouldn't use Trump exactly until it became a necessity. Even if Professor Shui kills Tian Yuan, they will not be affected in any way. To make right with Li Tian Yuan, Professor Zue is not needed at all. The man ordered everyone to take the cursed blood and join the attack. They immediately followed her order. The girl won't let this guy or her aunt down. But what the guy meant was that they still have pull and... He ordered all the chapters that had sworn an oath to him to rise to their feet and engage in battle. The decisive moment of all mankind had come. At all costs, the sword must not be allowed to fall into the hands of demons. They must sacrifice their lives for the Li family, to give Jiang Yu a chance to kill Li Tianyuan. Tianan replied that when it was over, then the protagonist could do whatever he wanted with it. But for now, he offered to join forces. The sword must not fall into the hands of demons. Although Qin Chen was touched by his enlightenment, this was not what he meant. But the people who had sworn an oath to him began to flee. There's no way they can defeat a powerful opponent like the Lai family. They follow Mr. Li to reach the heights, but they don't want to die. The higher the position people occupy, the more they value their own lives. This applies not only to them, but to all the higher-ups of the world. Mankind will never overcome demons. That's why he always had an ace up his sleeve. He used the art of illusion, invocation. For some reason their bodies weren't obeying. He made them take the cursed blood. The guy never trusted scum. 
so he cast a spell on them beforehand, and as soon as he needed it, the spell would work. After receiving the blood of demons, they will die along with the Lai family. Even after death, they won't let go of pulling and pulling. Such people have been ready to go to hell for a long time. Xin Cheng underestimated Li Tianyi's cunning. The man wondered how long this bunch of scum was going to hold back his army. The guy yelled to the girl that it was time to act. She must do it before everyone died. When thunder sparkles, a noble husband knows the harm of using it. If he sings without playing the drum when the sun goes down, the old men regretfully exclaim. It's from the Book of Change. Though rumored, the Qian Lun Pavilion was founded by Zhou Yi, the strongest immortal of the Han Dynasty, to protect the emperor for generations. Zhou and wrote the Book of Change with mankind and hid ten forbidden arts in it, each of which has the power to destroy the entire world. Zhou Yi's ancestor is an outstanding person that mankind has not encountered for centuries. During the Qin Dynasty, he studied under Hong Yun. He studied the true chaos technique and became the only person to awaken the absolute chaos bodies after the legendary emperors. And to protect humanity, he founded the Qian Lun Pavilion. It turns out to be Wan Zi's nephew. However, since the cultivation conditions of the true chaos technique are too harsh, an emperor who is not a son of heaven could not practice it. Therefore, the ancestor wrote a book of change consisting of nine forbidden techniques to teach it to the descendants of the pavilion. Yuan Qi asked, is it something like ping pong balls behind his back? Ching Cheng replied that there were only ping pong balls in his head. And this girl is one of the inheritors of the nine forbidden arts. She called for thunder. Lightning struck her. She used her own powers to force the heavenly forces into her. Only those who dare to use their bodies to amplify the power of thunder and lightning, to endure the pain of suffering a soul scorched by fire, are capable of such a thing. She entered the dragon essence. If that bastard didn't turn into a demon corpse, he'd be dead in seconds. Tian Yuan did not follow her advice and was immediately thrown aside. She immediately appeared in front of them and asked who gave him permission to get up in the first place. She struck him again. It was amazing that she was hiding such terrible power within her. Pavilion is also known as Dunlun, Shushan, and other ancient sects. Is he a real representative of the Dunlun state? Tian Yi had always thought that he was superior to Jiang Yu Yu. He also definitely wanted to fight more with her. He immediately turned. Now it was already pulling and he didn't know if it was even realistic to stop him with that kind of form. Invincible during transformation such as this. And in conjunction with demon blood. How dare that little girl humiliate the master. He'll tear her to pieces. She had to double her strength. This girl vowed to surpass her father and become the next head of the Qianlun Pavilion. She lifted this giant, then used the art of lightning, a piercing light. She flipped off the Yuan Tian. The girl used the power of space. But this monster also didn't think of giving up so easily. Still, this attack had decked her. He jumped and was ready to crush this girl, but she pierced him with a piercing light. The girl had increased her strength by a factor of 30. Guy yelled for her to be careful, for demons are usually born with increased regeneration. Perfect corpses tend to follow that ability. He quickly grew his arm. She decided to kill him again and used a piercing flash of light, after which she blew half his body off, but he began to recover quickly. Are demons really immortal? She wanted to use the piercing light again, but her body can no longer allow the lightning to pass through her. I think it's over. In terms of strength, the girl is not inferior to Tian Yuan, but the dragon's several times increased power is the limit of her body's capabilities. Every time lightning passes through her, she suffers a periodic damage. On the other hand, Pul Yuan can regenerate endlessly. In that case, she would increase the power of the dragon body by three times to deal with it once and for all. As soon as this silly girl's body exceeds its limit, she will die immediately. No longer can she worry about her opponent, for the guy will take him on. Tian Yuan started laughing as he felt the power of the demon clan's immortality. This laughter is making my ears pop. He shouted that it was time for Su's family members to gag him. The Li family is indeed patronized by the Wu clan. I guess that really was his backup plan. It turned out exactly as that boy predicted. He used the art of Yin, Demon Mound. Tian Yuan didn't understand how come his strength was completely suppressed and who was even capable of such a thing. Even though he hadn't reached the highest level of skill, he still thought of something to defeat the Wu clan. The Barrow is able to suppress the power of the demons in his body making regeneration impossible. Zhang Yu Yu must finish him off. She asked how many trump cards he still had. Perhaps they will see it again in the future. She used the art of lightning, a piercing beam, a 50-fold increase in strength. Now she could definitely kill him. Su Yun ordered her men to massacre the remnants. They dealt with the demons quickly, but someone did get a taste of it. 
so the man used self-detonation to die together. They spent their lives fighting for money and status, but in the end they all died. Sue's family lost about half of their men. Is it really over now? He was glad to be of service to the master. But the guy also thanked Susan for believing such a ridiculous story, where the Lee family supposedly followed the Wu clan without hesitation. He's not the least bit sorry for what he's done. If the protagonist hadn't appeared here with Miss Jiang, even the unification of the three great masters would hardly be able to stop Li Tianyuan into a demon. The whole of Tianchuan is indebted to them for this battle. The eradication of the unclean is nothing to the immortals. The girl asked what he was going to do about the pull and... That thing in human form had killed her little brother when she was younger. She wanted to end this worthless, disgusting scum on her own. Since he is Li Tianyi, he is able to accept both victory and defeat. Since his life is no longer worth anything, let Sue's daughter take it. However, before he died, he asked one favor. This thug still dares to raise his voice. He begged to massacre Li Tianyuan with his own hands. Mother died before she could make peace. But he won't promise anything like that. Li's strength won't be enough to defeat his father. According to the original plan, the guy was going to gain Li Tianyuan's trust by passing on the news of the sword, and then sneak into the basement later. So that in a time of vulnerability when the cursed blood changes, you can kill him. He really was going to absorb the blood mana and reach the transformation stage at once. Then he would be able to unshackle himself from the demonic clan's persecution. He would take Chen Ning to the Divine Empress to ask for her blessing to receive the sword and go down in history as a hero. If Chin Chung hadn't intervened here, the plan would have worked. But if the guy himself didn't show up at the right moment, the bony Tian would have been wiped out. First of all, Dong Fang Jishi doesn't know how to awaken the blade. In addition, the Chenlin Pavilion is also unreliable. And under the Demon Clan's close surveillance, the chances of surviving to see Dong Fang Jixi are slim to none. Secondly, this beast was used by Li Tian Yuan as a pawn. He would not directly allow himself to be treated like this. Does he really think that his father wouldn't have prepared a backup plan? Their kin are very afraid of the final backlash from Sui Zhan, so they don't show themselves. Therefore, there is only one best safety net. Every time they invade cities, they order their supreme to form a formation of 12 heavenly deities in advance in case of a critical situation. Tian Chuan was no exception. It takes 12 different demon descendants to activate these charms. It would seem that he could probably influence its triggering and cancelling by being a loyal associate. That's why the guy had long bided his time, waiting for the moment when he would have to risk summoning the formation with the strongest offshoot from a dozen years ago under the Lai House. So that's what he's been up to all along. There are only two paths left for him to take. Either perish here as an outcast of the unclean race, or resort to the spell saved by the main monster for a deadly battle with them. Naturally, the choice is now obvious. He began to summon the 12 greatest deities. They got the bloody blood right away, and drank it, after which their transformation began. They also impaled themselves. Their blood was the key to activating the pillars. The sky began to change. They didn't realize what was going on. Everyone started screaming that the world was coming to an end. But people couldn't get out because there was a dome. Something started flying out of the sky. Light touched each of the demon's hands. They have noticed that the energy of the Li Tianyuan continues to rise. Does the demon clan truly possess such power? Now even the three great masters can't handle him. He's grown again. Now that's when they won't even be able to overpower the giant anymore. But the protagonist replied that it was now that their trump card to seize the blade was lost. He thinks that the true monster lurking in the shadows behind the thug's back is already gnashing his teeth and getting nervous. This idiot had the audacity to self-launch his final information that was left in case of extreme measures. 